to the Future Nillimbic Committee meeting of Tuesday the 9th of June at 2020, commencing at 7pm. Members of the public are advised the meeting will be live stream and recorded and the live stream and video recording will be made publicly available on YouTube and Council's website. Nillimbic Shire Council also acknowledges the Wurundjeri people who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we're meeting tonight. And we would also like to pay our respects to their elders, both past and present and emerging and extend that respect to other Indigenous Australians present. We have no apologies tonight. Um, could I have a mover for the confirmation of the minutes of the FNC held on the 12th of May, 2020, please? Councillor Perkins seconded, Councillor Clark, all those in favour? And that is carried. Any disclosures of conflicts of interest, councillors? If not, we'll move on to the first item for the night, um, which is FN 01420, Early Years Infrastructure Plan. Can I have a mover for the motion? Councillor Brooker. Thank you. Do we get the motion up on? There it is. I'll just read it out. It's a couple of key points. Endorse the Early Years Infra Infrastructure Plan 2026, Attachment 1, which outlines a range of works, which include A, the renewal and improvement of early years facilities to support future needs, and B, the identification of possible co-location and hub opportunities to encourage integrated education and health support for children zero to eight years and their families. Thank you, Councillor Brooker. And can I have a seconder for the motion, please? Councillor Ashton, over to you, Councillor Brooker. Thank you, Mayor. Look, um, this uh, is a comprehensive report, and I think the purpose of the report really is to um, deliver an audit of all of our 26 early years um, facilities, preschools, maternal child and health centre uh, nurses and occasional care services. And what we want to do, I think, moving forward is to take politics or politicking out of this process. Because what we want to do is base it on our need, that is need in the community for these services and not particularly what um, a particular councillor uh, may not want to happen in his or her particular ward. So I think that's where it's really coming from. But this is coming and it's just to point out, it's coming in an overall framework that the, uh, the state government has said it's going to be funding 15 hours of three-year-old kindergarten from 2022. That is a massive uh, change to what has been the existing uh, circumstance in Victoria, uh, where five hours was provided and none of it was subsidised. So to go to 15 hours of uh, subsidised uh, preschool for three-year-olds is a massive uh, change. And I think it probably goes to the fact that, uh, you know, the government have decided that investment in early years pays dividends sometime into the future. Uh, I think, you know, all maybe intuitively we would agree with that. Um, it's a pretty narrow window uh, once you get, uh, over over that sort of an age, I, I'll, I'll put it like that. So to provide the best possible play, educational experience for those young people uh, seems like a, a good idea. Um, the, one of the implications of that, though, is we've got these 26 centres that we have to um, fit another group into in the, in, from 2022. And that means a, a, a three-year-old group. So that means a whole lot of work in terms of maybe expanding the existing infrastructure and probably more particularly getting the services to work in areas and cooperate in areas where they maybe haven't had to cooperate or share their facilities previously. So that is what is going to happen. Um, just a, a couple of comments on a, a few of the specifics. Um, there's an immediate challenge that report outlies at the uh, Eltham Mater Maternal and Child Health Nurse, 
We know that facility that is being taking place in the old War Memorial buildings. Um, and there's uh, talk that the best fit would be a, a relocation to the Eltham Co-op. We'll see how that plays out. But certainly that facility, if anyone has visited it, um, it's, to my mind, is not exactly um, best prop, uh, practice in terms of the physical condition. Obviously, the person who works there is doing a sterling job, but the surroundings, I don't think, are fantastic. Um, there's a uh, opportunity at Coniston Street uh, to move in a three-year-old program there. That's going to be important moving forward uh, as a co-located service with a maternal and child health nurse. There is room there. It's disability compliant, DDA compliant. So that would seem to be a good fit. Um, in our time, there's been a, a consolidation of services. Uh, Wattle Tree uh, Preschool has closed. Diamond Creek East Preschool has closed. Uh, Eltham Central, I believe, would have closed at the end of last year, but was given a lifeline by the Department of Education. Um, and, you know, I think what, what happens at the end of this year, I guess, happens. Um, so there's been a, a whole lot of changes in the space. And what this report is trying to do is to say that there's going to be a lot more changes as, as we have to accommodate this three-year-old uh, preschool group into this existing infrastructure. And we need to have an audit, if you like, or a process where it doesn't become, you know, my three-year-old program is better than your three-year-old program. Um, my three-year-old program is more deserving than your three-year-old program but really to go about, you know, what's the existing infrastructure? Can we accommodate three-year-olds or can't we? Can we, you know, apply the disability um, apparatus over the top of it that we need to? That's all, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brooker. Councillor Ashton. Uh, thank you. Yes. Look, um, again, I'd like to thank the community. Um, a lot of stakeholders are involved in this uh, um, and, that, you know, people have a strong commitment to the place that they go to for their early years with their, their small children. And I think uh, Councillor Brooker has sort of captured the fact that these are, are changing times. We have got a declining birth rate in Olympic, so it is a bit of a juggling out between looking at ageing infrastructure and working out you know, what's funded and by whom. Um, and also we have got more and more um, two-income families where um, hours and, and uh, facilities, you know, that are outside hubs may not be the way of the future. So, um, you know, I know, um, again, in rural areas, uh, these places are very much more than just places where your children go. It's where you connect to the young parent. Um, particularly Panton Hill and, and Kangaroo Ground, um, their places that I've experienced with. So I think um, it's it's a really good piece of work. I think it, it captures that as well that, you know, the maternal uh, child care, care nurses are, are on the lifeline for, for young parents. And uh, But we also have to look to their safety and what sort of environment they're working in. So um, I think it's, it's a good document. I think... Um, you know, it, it goes to 2026, and I, I think uh, that is a good time to review it. We'll have more idea then about what, what's occurring and, and also how the, the new program is being rolled out. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ashton. Any other councillors wish to speak? Councillor Clark. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mayor, I, I would be interested in just proposing, I'll, I'll speak to this first, but, but what I was intending to do was to propose a further resolution that um, a further report come back to council in the August uh, meeting cycle about the Diamond Creek occasional long daycare and the and the Eltham preschool. And the reason for that is um, I'll just speak to it first in, in a sense, um, just so that the the move originally hopefully might be able to adopt this. Um, he, he touched on, uh, Council Brooker touched on uh, two or three things which are still in a sense outstanding. Um, the two preschools that I'm referring to are the ones where there is the most conjecture. And as we move towards December, parents want certainty. 
We got to last Christmas and we had no idea about what was really going to happen at Diamond Creek. We had no idea what was going to happen at Eltham. They were at that stage probably going to close, certainly prior to that. They were trying to find an operator, et cetera. Equally in terms of Eltham, we've got an imminent announcement around the potential of the uh, Eltham Community Hospital uh, wanting to occupy all of these lands, potentially this site. And that, depending upon who you talk to which week, um, <clears throat> will happen in the next month or, or so. Um, so we do need to get some clarity for parents of what's going to happen here. Uh, and indeed, there are opportunities, funding opportunities as part of these GSFs and other things to uh, potentially include some of this to accommodate what needs to be done at a couple of these preschool. We spend an awful lot of our time and efforts on sporting facilities as part of GSF and other funding rounds. There are other things that need to be funded and preschools are very high, I think, on that priority list. No doubt, this is a very good document, I should say, um, setting out the infrastructure needs over the next six years and, and broadly does depoliticise what needs to be done when, and that's a good idea. But it does outline two or three things which are pretty important. Uh, and I'd be arguing, I'd be proposing that a further report on at least those two, and if, if Councillor um, Egan or, or Ashton wanted me to include Ferguson Park as well, I've got no problem with that. But I think it would be good to have a further report back in August to see where we think what's going to happen with these two, knowing uh, the, the urgency that's going to come up before the end of the year. Councillor Clark, can, uh, can you make the point, Councillor Clark, that it's Diamond Creek East Preschool, not Diamond Creek um, Occasional Care. Diamond Creek East Preschool was the, the one that ceased operating late last year. Um, Diamond Creek Occasional Care, uh, they're at capacity, they're beyond capacity. So, so they're up and running um, really well. Um, it was the Diamond Creek East Preschool that, that suffered through lack of numbers and, and was closed by um, their operator, Smarty, Smarty Pants, I think it was. Is I just note that this is also talking about a proposed extension or relocation of that service. That's why I mentioned it. Councillor Booker, are you amenable to that um, change in your resolution? Can you unmute yourself, please? Just, just to understand it, because uh, no one has uh, mentioned it. Um, what, what you're saying is a report on Eltham Central and Diamond Creek East. Uh, is that correct, Councillor? Well, I was referring, uh, in, in short... And Ferguson. Uh, yes, I, I'm Ferguson. talking about those additional requirements that require further demand and viability research that are listed on page 40 of our report. And I'm just trying to make sure that we are dealing with those leading up to the Christmas period. We've got as much information and clarity as to what needs to be done prior to that. Otherwise, this won't come back to us. Would you like to get those words up on this? You can't. Um, staff aren't able to put it up on the screen. Uh, what are the exact words, Councillor Clark? So the exact words are that a further report be brought back to the August meeting cycle about Eltham Preschool, um, Diamond Creek Occasional and Long Day Care, and Ferguson Park. Got that. Okay, is every <coughs> councillor on top of that? An update. Are yeah, you just uh, available to that. No, a question through the chair to uh, Corinne Nichols. Is she on this Zoom yes. meeting? One moment, Councillor Booker. We'll just get her up. Corinne, over to you. Can you can answer Councillor Booker's uh, question? Yeah. Corinne, I just think maybe this isn't being, uh, when we say the, the if, if, if Councillor Clark is talking about page 40, that's, I think, referring to 2526. Is, is that correct? No. Like that's an out year. No, no, no. I'm talking about 40 of the Councillor report, page 34 of the officer report. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Was there a question for Corinne, Councillor Brooker? Yes. Is what what kind of a I mean, what what is? Can you give us an update on the status status of Eltham Central? Do we really need a report? I mean, a year ago it was it was finishing 
at the end of this year because it was given a special extension by the Department of Education. And my understanding, it was very specifically for this year and this year only. Um, through the chair, yes, Councillor Brooker, that is correct. The Department of Education and Training, though, has um, put a tender out for expression of interest in all of the preschools that were closed um, because of a lack of uh, the best chance service being able to continue. Uh, having said that, there are no enrolments being offered for next year at this stage for Eltham Preschool because there is no preschool in operation. So if an expression of interest was to come to the fore, that uh, provider would need to know that the preschool had no enrolments for next year and they would be looking at the following year for enrolments. In relation to Diamond Creek East Preschool, uh, both Memorial Preschool and uh, the other preschool in Diamond Creek, which is, uh, it's escaped my mind at the moment, is... Yeah. Uh, thank you, is uh, have both put in an expression of interest to expand their current services to Diamond Creek East at Conison Street. So the department are currently determining which of the two preschools will be um, eligible to, to take on that preschool. So that preschool will continue next year. It's a matter of which of the two existing preschools will take over that site. So is, is a report in... I mean, enrolment is the end of July. Does this confuse things or does it clarify things, this report that Councillor Clark? Because I think it, it may be just Where, you know, avoiding happy. something, really. Uh, no, I'm happy to bring an update to Council in relation to the status of where both Diamond Creek East and Eltham Preschool are up to in August. That's, that's not an issue. We can do that. We will know by August uh, the department selection in relation to who will take on Diamond Creek East and also if there has been any interest in the uptake of Eltham Preschool. Okay. My, my only comment then would be, is it likely to increase anxiety or speculation around the future of these two centres? You us bringing a report in August for these two or like... No, I don't believe there would be any increase in anxiety. Um, it would be, we can do that through a briefing or we can do it through an OCM, whichever councillors would prefer. Okay. What would All you right. prefer, Councillor Brooker, an OCM or a briefing? Well, me, I'm suggesting it goes to committee so that yep. we actually, okay. and anybody wants to make a submission, it can. I mean, this is about information, informing, being transparent with the community about where life's at. Yep. Councillor Brooker, are you amenable to that? Yeah. All right, so staff will make the necessary adjustments for point three, which you've already heard. Do you want to re repeat that? I'll just get um, governance to repeat it so you know. So I've got that uh, the committee under delegation requests a further report to the August Huchinilabic committee meeting um, about Altham Preschool and Diamond Creek East occasional and long daycare. Uh, no, it's, it's uh, not Altham the preschool. Yeah. Altham Preschool I, and Diamond Creek East Preschool. And preschool. Yeah. I had also included Ferguson Park to see where that was up to. There is no change, um, Councillor Clark, with Ferguson no. Park. It's still a required service no, no, for no, that area. Ferguson Park, the report says that an additional room is contingent upon enrolment numbers to demonstrating there is a demand for Hurstbury to operate a sustainable classroom. So... I was looking to see whether enrolment numbers, which we're starting to have a look okay. at, might require any additional room so that we've got the planning in for that uh, if, if the demand is needed in the rural areas. Okay. Yep, absolutely. We can include that if that was what council would prefer. Yeah. And the Diamond Creek, it was Diamond Creek occasional and long daycare as well, as per the table on page four. I, I, I think we're saying that the occasional care centre isn't needed to be included. Well, it is in the table that Councillor Clark referred to on page 40, which is additional projects that require further demand and viability research. So it talks about uh, the need to do a master plan in Diamond Creek, an infrastructure master plan. Um, it would be good to get an update on that process as well. I think we'll cover it off and put the four of them down and then we cover it. Thank you. Any other councillors wish to speak on the matter? Any other councillors wish to speak? I'm just having some technical issues here. If not, we'll put it to the vote. 
All those in favour? And that is carried. Thank you, councillors. Thank you. We next move on to our next item of the evening, FN 01520, Equine in Nolimbic. Um, Can I have a mover for the motion, please? Councillor Ashton. Are we having speakers? Yeah, I'm just about to give a list of the speakers. I'm going to read out the whole list in order so people know where uh, they are. Well, can we hear the speakers before we move the motion? Yeah, we will. Just give me a moment. Um, Debbie Smith on behalf of the Hurstbridge Saddlery Stock Food via the CEO. Kath Giles uh, on behalf of Millen Force Action Group. Pam Stewart on behalf of St Andrew's Pony Club. Kate Cruz, Ingrid Crichton. Wayne Spence on behalf of Yarrambat Adult Riding Club. Joanne Jamison. Peter Stewart on behalf of St Andrew's Trail Riding Group. Tori Mitten. Narelle Campbell. Carolyn Johnston via the CEO, Rachel Morrison via the CEO, Bill Lord via the CEO, Greg Johnson on behalf of Fonz via CEO, Heather Wilson via CEO. And we've had three submissions which are late, but I'm happy as chair to um, include them. Jan Bell, Geraldine Sanderson via CEO and Colleen Hackett via CEO. So the first one, um, via our CEO, Carl Smith, is Debbie Smith. Uh, good evening, councillors, and good evening, gallery. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, so this um, first submission is from Debbie Smith, and it reads as follows. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to provide a submission on equine in Nillumbik. My name is Debbie Smith and I own and run the Hurstbridge Saddlery and Stock Feed business located in Hurstbridge. I started out making and repairing rugs, uh, horse coats in Yarambat nearly 40 years ago and moved my business to its present location 10 years ago. I was able to extend the floor space of this business a few years ago. I design and make rugs which sell very well despite a lot of competition from cheap overseas imports. This is a traditional skill, which thanks to a dedicated group of local customers, I'm still able to make my living from. I now sell a whole range of products such as horse feed, rugs, saddle blankets, and a wide range of medicinal and natural remedies. Many of my customers keep other animals such as alpacas, sheep, and goats, as well as dogs. So I also sell a whole range of other pet and companion animal products. Many locals enjoy living sustainably by growing their own food and keeping chickens. This is another part of my business. We are always happy to help people and cater for all tastes and budgets while concentrating mainly on practical everyday products. I employ two full-time and four part-time staff who are all locals and I have also been able to teach others how to make and repair rugs. During COVID, I was able to retain all my staff and the business really thrived with locals spending more time with their animals on their properties. Families coming out from the suburbs to either go to local riding schools or adjustment centers also help support my business by picking up feed and other supplies while out in Nillenburg. I have been able to invest in an embroidery machine and produce many of the local riding club uniforms, as well as work for other local businesses and clubs. I also uh, provide prizes for local horse competitions and sponsor local clubs. In return, the equine community supports my business. Horse riding is very family oriented with parents and kids all being involved. And I get to see this both in my businesses and also out and about at the various clubs. I live locally and have over the years belonged to Yarrambat, Hurstbridge and St Andrews Riding Clubs. My daughter attended Pony Club at St. Andrews. We are lucky to have good off-road trails right outside our gate and get to ride out safely on quiet tracks and trails. We are also lucky to have five clubs in a very small area, which means there is a good opportunity to compete and also attend rallies and clinics. From a business perspective, Nillenbeek has been an ideal place for me to run a family business. And it is great that the role of horse riding as a recreational activity uh, and as a contrib 
contributor economically to Nilmbik is now being recognized. Thank you again for this opportunity. That is the submission. Thank you, Mr. Cowie. Um, our next submitter is Cass Giles on behalf of St. Andrew's Pony Club. Oh, sorry, on behalf of the Nillenby Horse Action Group. Um, are you there, Cass? And if you could unmute yourself, please. That's great. Yes, just have. Thank you. Thank you very uh, much. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to address Council on behalf of the Nillenby Horse Action Group. Uh, we congratulate Council and staff in the development of this advocacy plan, Equine in Nillumbi, and we support it as an important strategic document that is long overdue. Equine in Nillumbi is a good news story, a long history of strong participation, residents living healthy, active outdoor lives, a popular rural sporting and recreational pursuit, including 12 local clubs and several riding schools. Well-run, largely self-sufficient clubs, affiliated with their state and national bodies. Well, 89% um, of participants are women and girls who are often underrepresented in this in other sport. Multi-generational social benefit and engagement from five to 85 year olds. Huge volunteer contribution. $16.9 million economic input to the Shire with 34 businesses directly relating to equine providing employment for 74 people. Almost half of business owners are expecting growth in income in the next five years. Horse keeping is one of the largest rural activity sectors underpinning our green wedge. The majority of land owners who consciously and actively manage their properties and who seek information and programs to assist them in this, with 33% spending between six to 10 hours weekly on property maintenance and 36% spending 11 or more hours per week and access to safe off-road shared trails with connected linkages for all trail user groups is highly valued. The key issues identified by riding club members were facility quality, cost, maintenance challenges, infrastructure age and limitations, and safety. 67% of respondents to the survey said that demand for participation in equine sport is growing, particularly in trail riding, dressage, eventing, show jumping and inter-school competitions. The plan's actions will be the key to the success in implementing this plan, identifying where council support is needed, addressing infrastructure deficiencies and road safety issues. Critically, this plan will enable clubs and groups to access external funding and grant opportunities for facility and equipment upgrades as needed. To date, the equine sector has had limited engagement with council and this plan will pave the way for constructive dialogue and activity going forward. I urge all councillors to vote to adopt equine in Nillumbik in recognition and support of a core sector of the Shire's rural communities and a popular recreational sporting pursuit, thereby delivering on this important action from the council plan 2017 to 21. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cathy. Any questions for councillors? I'd just like to remind you all that the um, submissions read by our CEO can't be questioned, but the submitters who are live, either voice or video, can be asked questions of. So any questions for Cathy? Councillor Brooker. Thank you, Cathy, um, for your submission. I, I think I asked you a fortnight ago a, a, a similar question. I just want to sort of flesh it out a, a little bit more about how you would respond to people who say that there are some negative environmental consequences um, from, from horses in the Shire. Um, and I think you replied from memory um, that, that you would be prepared to sit down with any group and, and talk through kind of in a constructive way any issues they had, as well as I think saying there are some people that, you know, <laughs> I think saying that there's some people that you possibly couldn't sit down with because they were too had, had a particular fixed view. Is, is that is that right? Yeah, absolutely. I I, I welcome a dialogue that uh, you know is seeking a, a constructive outcome. Uh, there's not a lot of point in engaging with people who just have a personal perspective that uh, you know horses. You know, there's no way forward uh you know the the whole journey of education uh if it's not delivered 
um, in an approachable way is not helpful to people. And uh, what we find uh, in my, when I meet new people in the neighbourhood, what they really appreciate is when you actually reach out to them to help them, not to name and shame and point the finger. And unfortunately, there's a fair bit of that that goes on from some sectors of the community, which doesn't contribute to the discussion, to be quite frank. Okay. So would you say, though, are there any legitimate concerns that they have that you would say, okay, look, the, the overall social benefits from horse riding, as you've mentioned, are worth the um, slight environmental problems that they cause? Is that... Would, would you sort of describe it like that or or not? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I uh, acknowledge that there are some property owners that could uh, do better and, that, and probably need that help and guidance to uh, options for them in the management of their, of their land. Uh, but absolutely, we know that is in the in the minority, and I think the uh, the survey uh, points that out. Uh, that I think it was only about three percent of uh, horses were kept, uh, perhaps in in land that I wouldn't consider suitable for horses, which is a negligible amount. Uh, but the yeah the social uh, elements are it's an incredible uh, community. Um, and, uh, you know, as I've said in my uh, speech tonight, there's just so many elements of it from health, mental well-being, uh, appreciation of where we live in our natural environment. And this is what engenders a love of our green wedge from, uh, for young people and kids uh, for a lifetime. That's what happened with me. I mean, that's why I'm so passionate about our green wedge is I grew up walking and riding through our neighbourhood. And uh, this is what I'd love to see for, for the kids of today. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ashton. Thanks, thanks, Cathy. Um, just for those councillors and, and people that are watching this tonight, could you just explain a little bit about what NAGS is and how it came to be and perhaps how many members you have and who you represent? Yeah, so Nellenbeck uh, Horse Action Group uh, had its uh, origination uh, with the discussions with the Patton Hill Bushland Reserves about uh, where there was a proposal to uh, potentially take horses off trails they had used for over 60 years. Um, and we set about demonstrating that uh, the environment and, and horse riding actually can happily coexist. Uh, and But since those days, apart from responsible uh, trail riding, we have um, really backed the whole uh, notion of informed land management. So we uh, annually run a number of programs, a few of them have been done with council, on helping people where they need knowledge and advice and skill uh, to better improve their land management. Uh, and we, we hope to do that uh, as the plan suggests in the future. Any other questions for Cathy? If not, thank you very much, Cathy. No, my pleasure. And uh, sorry, Jane, I just, uh, I know you said uh, about membership. So we uh, engage with hundreds of people uh, through our mailing list and uh, Facebook on, in any given week. So we basically see ourselves as a conduit for information. Does that answer your question, Councillor Ashton? Any other questions for Cathy? If not, we'll bid her adieu and go on to our next submitter. Thank you, Councillors. Uh, next, we have Pam Stewart on behalf of the St Andrews Horse and Pony Club. Are you there, Pam? Pam, are you there? Just unmute yourself. 
Okay, can you hear me now? We can, far away. Okay, thanks for letting me talk. My family has been associated with the Pony Club for around 25 years and I've held the position of District Commissioner for 20 of those years and I've only recently retired at the start of this year. My husband is the president of the club for about 10 years as well. My eldest child has since finished Pony Club but my grandchildren are riding here as well. Also, my second child continues to ride at Pony Club. Pony Club teaches children to ride and to look after their ponies. The children have a theory session every rally, which comes as a certificate to work towards. Pony Club is also a fantastic health benefit to all, as the ponies need to be looked after every day, not just at Pony Club. This engages children to go outside to feed and rug their ponies, which is a great daily exercise. We also educate children on their local environment and being responsible for their surrounding trails and responsibility for all trails. It is also very community minded as children get to mix with other local children they might not see at school. The children can also ride safely to Pony Club on our local roads and a part of their education is on road safety. Sometimes it can be an issue if Rob Roy has an event on as this increases the traffic along our road to Pony Club. Most of our funds are raised via volunteer fundraising and are used for the upkeep of our grounds. We have a working bee about once a month to clean the grounds and the cross country area. Mm. This involves any fencing repairs, weed spraying, maintenance of the jumps, and the majority of our money goes to topping up sand on our arenas. We also try to eradicate most of the rabbits that set up burrows on the grounds. All of our work is done by our families. Our club rooms are used for pony club, adult riders, RDA and trail riding meters, as well as local events. Our club is part of one of the local trails and we have a defib located inside the clubhouse for anyone who needs it. The pony club holds two major events during the year, one being a dressage day and the other being a show jumping day. Both are very popular and are well attended. Our only issue being parking, as a lot of our parking is on an incline. In conclusion, we'd like very much to see the plan adopted by council. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Pam. Any questions for Pam from councillors? If not, thank you very much, Pam. Yeah, back to you. We next move on to Kay Cruz. Are you there, Kay? Welcome, Kay. Just a reminder, you have three minutes. Can you hear us, Kay? Just unmute yourself when you're ready. Ready. Thank Great. you. We can hear you. Go ahead. Good evening, Mayor Egan, councillors and council staff. Thank you for the opportunity to show my support for the equine in Nilam Big Plan. This plan is a positive step forward for the equine community of Nilam Big. It provides the evidence that the equine community was aware of, but until now has not had any hard data for. And that is that the equine sector plays a significant role in supporting the existence of the green wedge, financially and within land management. And that this can be enhanced by council providing greater support to the community and its sport. Some will ask, why does the equine community deserve a plan? Isn't it special treatment? And is it only on the agenda because there are councillors in office that ride horses? This is true, some do ride horses, but they also represent the rural wards to which horse riding is a common sport and which attracts businesses to support that activity. Some previous councillors and their supporters would not have the ability to see what the equine community brings to the security of the Green Wedge. They lost that ability when their children grew up and stopped riding ponies, or indeed, they stopped riding themselves. As the report states, the equine sector has positive economic and social benefits for Nilambic, with a total economic impact of approximately 16.9 million per annum. As part of the community consultation of the plan, a survey was administered to gain baseline data on the sector. This had never been captured before. 
there was a massive response with over 426 surveys completed by business and equine land home owners. 330 landholders provided information on their properties. 59% of equine properties in Nillambic are less than 20 acres. 55% of all equine properties in Nillambic home three or less horses and 93% five or less horses. 76% of all equine properties are either fully pastured or mostly pastured properties with only 3% of horses on bush blocks. These stats indicate that the majority of equine properties have appropriate horse numbers on land suitable for grazing, not the horror story some of the members of the community would like you to believe. This plan should be adopted as recommended as it contains nothing contentious. It simply provides evidence as to why a supportive level from council should be focused in this area. The plan is not suggesting the council spend millions, but is acknowledging the importance of the equine community and the sport and would like to work with that sector to help improve safety and land management and support businesses and clubs. Nothing scary here, just a chance to acknowledge and positively support a rural community that until now has had little focus supply. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kay. Um, councillors, any questions for Kay? There being none, thank you very much for your input. Yeah, can I, sorry. Thank you. Sorry, yeah. Councillor Clark, just one moment, Kay. Yep. I just wanted to thank Kay for her submission and for her, you know, and her husband's significant contribution over the journey to the Shire. Uh, not often you get to hear and hear from people that have made some contributions. So well done and uh, thank you very much. Thanks, thank Kay. you. Thank you. Um, next, we have Ingrid Crichton. Are you there, Ingrid? And again, just a reminder that councillors may wish to ask you questions when you're finished, so don't jump off straight away when you're finished. You have three minutes. Can you hear us, Ingrid? If you could unmute yourself. Unmute. Okay, thank you. It's come up. Fantastic. Thanks, Ingrid. You have three minutes. Okay, thank you. Good evening all and thanks for giving me this opportunity to address council. I've lived in Nillambic for over 34 years. For the whole of this time I've owned and ridden horses and been a member of the Horse Riding Clubs Association of Victoria through my membership of various local adult riding clubs. I am a life member of both Eastern Region and Kangaroo Ground Adult Riding Clubs. It's wonderful that council is establishing an equine strategy for Nillambic. Horses are part of the history of the Shire from its earliest beginnings. Many residents choose to live here because it gives them and their children access to land to keep horses frozen. and to safe riding areas. Their safety is important and it's great to see Council recognise this and to provide land and facilities to pony and adult riding clubs and trails for safe off-road riding. The HRCAV has a membership of over 5,000 and over 90% of its members are female. Historically, facilities for female sport have been a low priority and funding figures will prove this. Sports that cater equally for men and women are increasing, but we still have a long way to go. Sports that cater for older women are actually few and far between and horse riding is one such sport. Both my clubs have a strong membership of over 50 year olds and many members like myself are over 60. It has been my privilege in the past to serve for eight years on the board of Valley Community Financial Services, the company that manages five branches of the Bendin. I observed significantly more funding went to established male dominated sports than those that cater predominantly for women. I think this also applies within other community funding bodies, perhaps such as council. It's noteworthy also that most adult riding clubs and pony clubs are self-funded and rely on members to raise funds as well as to provide the labour needed to maintain their grounds, as Pam alluded earlier. 
By having a positive equine plan, council is recognising how important horse-related activities are to this shire. They support businesses such as Debbie's and employment ranging from farriers to feed stores, vets, riding schools, coaches, saddleries, divorce dentists and many more. All of these benefit the economy of the Shire and facilitate for young and old the enjoyment of our chosen sport. On behalf of all riders, thank you for this great initiative. Thank you very much, Ingrid. Um, like the other speakers, you're able to be questioned by councillors. Any questions, councillors? Councillor Clark. Thank you, Ingrid. And thank you also for your contribution to the Shire over the journey. I do note that we've got two objectors later on. They're not going to present uh, personally, but I do note they're both male. Uh, <laughs> you comment that uh, um, we're not, th this is often a sport very much supported by women. I, I note governments generally are doing more around uh, providing facilities, change rooms and other things dedicated towards enabling women to participate in sport. Are you seeing any contributions by levels of government to support you uh, where it is often a female dominated area um, in trying to improve the facilities for your membership? Unfortunately, Peter, the answer to that question has to be no. Um, I don't think the federal or state governments are particularly interested in supporting um, women through um, their interest in riding clubs and horses generally. We've had no evidence of that. Any other questions, councillors? Councillor Ashton. Thanks, Ingrid. Um, I think one of the things um, people may be interested in is that, unlike a lot of sports, could you explain why horse riding is unique in the fact that when people compete, it's a, they compete against different, gen, you know, male and female compete, uh, unlike any other sport. I think this is yep. really important. Yep, sure, Jane. Um, the Horse Riding Clubs Association uh, of Victoria, and it's the only one in Australia, um, is founded on the basis that everybody should have access to um, competition on, an, on a level playing field. So they have a grading system which starts at level five, which is basically you can stay on the horse and sort of manoeuvre it around the arena to advanced, which is the level where they're doing some of the things that we like to watch on TV if we're watching the Olympics. Um, in between, there are all the levels that you go through. There is a very... Um, a complex arrangement for assessing people so that they are put into the right categories and are able to ride against other people who are at the same level of skill and experience that they are. So um, it is very much a case of everybody can get in there, enjoy the sport and be uh, competing against people with equal skills to their own. So I think that's what makes it unique uh, in, in um, the horse riding fraternity because uh, other organisations such as Equestrian Australia don't work on quite that same system. Does that answer your question or were you looking for something else there? Well, also the fact that it's one of the few sports, even at Olympic level, where men and women against <laughs> each other. <laughs> I missed that very obvious point. Yes, indeed. We compete on absolutely level terms with each other and including at the Olympics. So, um, yes, the, the, um, the general sports that are um, enjoyed at Adult Riding Club uh, go right up to Olympic level and men and women compete on an absolute level playing field. And you don't have to be under 30 as well to complete at the Olympics on horses. You can be 60 or 70 even. That's right. There was a Japanese gentleman who had his 71st birthday during the Olympics in competition in dressage. Fantastic. Thank you, Ingrid. If there's no more questions, thank you for your submission. Councillor Brooker, can you unmute yourself, please? One moment. Yeah, look, just 
Ingrid, uh, this isn't a question about the equine strategy at all. So if you can, if you can just help me though, you mentioned you're on the board of Valley Financial Services and you distributed community grants, but yes. you were unable, it seemed to me that you were saying to get any grants to directed towards your particular interest of horse riding. Now, why, can you explain to us why do you think that was? Um, I can explain that. I can, ex I can explain that very easily because I did not see my role on that board as being a representative of the horse riding fraternity. I saw myself as a totally objective and independent member of the board who was judging all the applications for funding in an objective manner as to what would most, most benefit the community. And I think it was probably uh, my strong desire to be objective and impartial and fair, which was detrimental to applications from my own clubs because uh, I disqualified myself from um, any discussion about those particular funding issues. As, as indeed did other members of the board. So we acted as um, I would hope all board members do, that you disqualify yourself from voting on matters that in which you have a personal interest. Does that answer your question, Councillor Brooker? You need to Yes, it does. I don't, I, I, it's an interesting area, I think, but we'll leave it at that. Thanks, Ingrid. Thank you, well. Ingrid, a good philosophy that others could take notice of. Thank you again for your submission. Thank uh, you. Wayne Spence was actually down to speak next and he's running late. So we'll go over to Joanne Jamison. Are you there, Joanne? Thanks, Ingrid. You're welcome. The joys of Zoom. Any councillor like to sing a song in the interim? Ah, she's here. Fantastic. Joanne. There are no joys for Zoom. That says Jan. That may be Jan Bell, is it? Joanne, if you are there, can you make yourself known, please? It's like a seance. With you, yes, the flickering light. Getting a sign. Right, we seem to be having some difficulty with Joanne, so right, we've got it. Fantastic. Joe, can you hear us? If you could unmute yourself, please. Fantastic. Thank you. You have three minutes and councillors may wish to ask you some questions when you're finished. So if you, you can, as soon as you unmute yourself, you're ready to go. Can you hear us? What's happened to us? We're having some technical difficulties with Joanne. Is Peter Stewart there? Whoever gets there first, Peter Stewart or Joanne? Can I suggest while I sort that out that we might hear from Carl from one of the others? Oh, here I am. Well, I think we've got Peter Stewart. Are you there, Peter? Yes, I am. Thank you. Fire away. You have three minutes and then councillors may wish to ask you some questions. Thank you. Um, I'm talking on behalf of the Andrews trial riding group and thank you for the opportunity to speak. We are affiliated with the national body of ASRA, which is which has a clear focus on environmental issues and rider safety. History shows that trial riding has existed in the local area for a very long time. Our club also has a lot of junior members, which are because mainly because we're a family friendly club. And which I might note I am an active rider as well. <laughs> And I would like to thank Council for their support in the establishment of the equine Olympic plan with horse, horse riding acknowledged in the area. The plan shows 
as an economic benefit to the area. And believe me, my wallet is always empty. We have lots of local businesses that benefit from our sport. Safety is a high priority. And the report refers to the fact that more work will be done on the road trails that need improvement. A lot of our senior riders have concerns with riding on the trails as quite often you get cars and or push bikes coming up and education appears to be something that can be uh, required and improves a lot. We would also like to see, it also needs more signage for road awareness for car drivers in the Shire as the plan outlines. In conclusion, I would like very much to see the plan adopted by council. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Any questions for Peter from councillors, Councillor Ashton? Thank you, Peter. Um, could you just tell us a bit about the history and the membership of the St Andrews Trail Riding Group and where, where you ride and what you do? Um, our history goes back about 10 years when we established that there was a, a few of us that just enjoyed the trail riding in the local area the camaraderie and just having a, a bloody good time virtually riding our horses and enjoying the environment and all the pleasures that that bring. Um, we currently have riding members of up to about uh, 50 on our list. Our rides are not just in Nillimbik. We also go out and go to a few other places as well. And, and once again, just enjoy the joys of the environment, uh, good friendship, and just have a good time. Thank you, Peter. Any other questions from councillors? If not, thank you very much, Peter, for your thank submission. Thank you. Um, Joe is still having a few technical problems, so we've got Tori in the wings waiting, so we'll go on to you, Tori. Tori, you ready? Yes, I am. Thank you, Karen. Okay, so you've got three minutes to speak and then councillors may wish to ask you some questions. So fire away. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tori Mitten. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. I've lived in Smith's Gully for 10 years and Nillimbickshire for over 25 years. I have a business, Greensboro Grain Store, which retails pet food, stock feed, uh, all associated supplies, hay and basic garden supplies. I have been servicing clients in the Millibickshire and surrounds for 17 years. Not only just horses, but dogs, chickens, sheep, cows, you name it. The horse community within Millibickshire are a large percentage of my clientele and without them, my business would not exist. I ride horse, horses recreationally and am a regular amateur competitor in HRCAV and EA, eventing, show jumping and dressage, and mounted games with the Mounted Games Association, Association of Victoria. I travel statewide and interstate to events. Since I was very young, I've always ridden and had horses in my life. I went through pony club in country, Western Victoria, and many other equine pursuits along the way. I moved to Melbourne in my early 20s, and I was drawn to the Nillimbic area to continue my horsey passions. What attracted me was the accessibility to the city, its natural beauty with a great balance of rural pasture space and a blend of bushland and the horse opportunities that it provided. I joined a local club. I then discovered how strong and supportive the, community he the horse community here is. So in the mid nineties, I bought property, I moved in and have been here ever since. I began instructing at local pony clubs, adult riding clubs and privately. I have been doing that for 25 years now. My son, Ben, is 17. He joined pony club locally when he was four and found a love for mounted games. He is currently undertaking ACE and although has put horse riding on pause, 
He is now enjoying our surrounds on foot with regular walk outings with his local friends. In my time here, this is the first report I've seen of its kind. I commend it and I support it. I'm very encouraged with the references to safe trails in the area and the prospect of shared, a shared equine facility, i.e. indoor arena. I trust council will recognise the value in adopting and actioning this plan. It is a solid launching point to bring participants of all horse activities to this a short and long term. With my experience in attending events in other shires, I think it will be positive for economic growth for local businesses. I'm confident in supporting the existing equine participants, that in the equine participants within Nilovic will only build on the popularity of this rural sport. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tori. Any questions from councillors, please, Councillor Ashton. Uh, thank you, Tori. As somebody who is obviously out and about a bit and, and instructing, could you could you explain to councillors and myself, you know, what having an indoor arena might mean in the future? Um, an indoor arena, in in my opinion, provides um, a really solid base. It, it's, 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 it, it gives a chance for local local clubs um, to then grow their capacity within their own club uh, for fundraising or whatever it, it, it would kind of put in a lot of ways when I look at other areas within the state that have a have a big indoor local equine facility like that it becomes a bit a bit of an icon for that area and all sorts of disciplines of, of the equine world, can use that one area, so it becomes, it, you know, it comes a multitasking equine facility and a, and a bit of an icon for the area. So, what what's the difference between an indoor area and an outdoor area? Oh, it, it gives you all weather, all weather, all you know, uh, twilight. You know, you can ride in the dark. You can, um, you know, you can do things during winter. Um, you can actually get more of a crowd um, so that, you know, th there's more chance to, um, you know, bring more participants or observers and that sort of stuff to an indoor capacity than to an outdoor capacity. So, Tori, you're comparing it to things like our basketball competitions that bring in thousands of visitors and have economic development opportunities for the local businesses when all of those people come in for events, you're saying that, that yes. would be, we'd get the same result if we had a yeah. facility. And I mean, we it's, do... it's, it's a common thing that, you know, when, when we go to an event, you know, not only do we, we go to that venue and, and they're pulling in a lot of resources, local resources to run that event in that area, uh, whether it be from, you know, the port of Luz or the rubbish or whatever it is. But we not only just stay at that venue for the competition, you know, the Friday night or the Saturday night, we'll be out down to the local pub. You're going down to the local supermarket to get supplies. You're using the local um, petrol station. It's, it's all that um, additional stuff. But we always, yeah, most people will go out. It's not just staying at the venue. You are, you're always spending money elsewhere. Yes, well, having been there and done that, I can attest to that with um, <laughs> nothing much left in my pockets. I'm glad my most of my kids are now old enough to fund their own equine pursuits. Um, <laughs> thank you very much, Tori. Any other questions for Tori? Tori? If not, thank you again, Tori. Um, I'd just thank like you. to let councillors and everybody else know, participants as well as those in the gallery, we actually have a special meeting listed to commence at 8 p.m. tonight. And as we still have uh, quite a few submissions to go, um, I need to ask for a councillor to temporarily adjourn our FNC to allow me to open the special meeting. And I'll then call to temporarily adjourn the special meeting and return to the FNC to conclude the order of business before we resume the item in the special meeting. So I hope you can all follow that. So I've got to stop this meeting, open the next one, stop that one, and then come back to this one. So can I have a mover to temporarily adjourn the FNC? Thank you, Councillor Booker. And a seconder, <coughs> Councillor Demerick. All those in favour? 
and that is carried. So if all the participants and gallery people can just stay online, we will come back to shortly. This seems like an administrative nonsense. Why don't we just continue on with the meeting? The local government. Bizarre. You're muted, Karen. Seems like Karen's talking, but no one can hear. Sorry. Welcome, everybody. Um, the same rules and regs apply as in the first meeting. So we are being live streamed and recorded. Can I have a mover to um, close this meeting and go back into FNC temporarily? Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Brooker, second, and Councillor Perkins. All those in favour? And that is carried. Thank you. Right, we will now resume our FNC. Our next submitter is Narelle Campbell. Are you online, Narelle? And we have two other submitters, Wayne Spence and Joanne Jamison. I'm not sure whether you guys are online yet. I know you're both... Um, out looking for that lost child up at Mount Yeah, but I wasn't there before. I'm here. Oh, fantastic, Narelle. All right, um, Narelle Campbell, you have three minutes and uh -huh. the councillors have the opportunity to ask you some questions. So fire away. I'm going to aim to give you some time back. Um, my perceived potential conflict of interest is a standing item whenever I speak. Can you hear me? Excellent, good. Um, so I work for the Department of Health and Human Services. Occasionally I write funding submissions for consideration by government, but my professional role bears no relationship to this submission at all. I am so excited about this submission. Um, we moved to Nillenbeek about 15 years ago so that my daughter and I could ride together. And with a few gaps here and there, we've been pretty much doing that ever since. I'm probably the only person talking tonight who just trail rides, yeah? So we don't belong to a club. We kind of have a few time commitment issues. So we ride trails around our local immediate area. We don't have a float. We just ride out on the trails. And our area is so peaceful and so accessible and so explorable when you're on the back of a horse. Um, we've been doing that for 15 years and... We share the trails nowadays. There are mountain bikes out there. There are other horse riders out there. There's the occasional walker out there. It's just, it's beautiful. Um, I'm so glad that council has an interest in doing this. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Jane, for both of you for championing the, um, the plan. It's an absolute perler. Uh, Kath Giles, congratulations on the work that you've probably put into this. I support the plan. I think that it represents the differing recreational interests of equestrian communities in Nillenbeek. I think it recognises the economic, land management, environmental and social activities, efforts and contributions in the rural parts of the Shire. It recognises that when you've got a horse, you work damn hard on your land um, and land management and maintenance go hand in hand with horse ownership. It recognises the historical context of horse ownership in the Shire and how that applies to us today in modern times. And I think that's really exciting. Um, I think that it recognises the contribution of volunteers, um, particularly at pony clubs and occasionally out on the trail network as well. Um, volunteers are really important to a place like Nillenbeek. They're really important to rural areas and rural pursuits. And for equestrian recreation, it's fantastic. And it supports the ongoing development and use of shared trail networks through the Shire. And I think that that's really, really exciting. Um, it pro promotes safety and equity for participants of equestrian pursuits. And importantly, it supports women. And in our case, it's my daughter and I 
hanging out together on the back of a couple of horses every week. And that's just, it's ice. Um, the survey that informed this plan was really comprehensive. It was really thorough. The questions were really specific. Um, they're probably some of the most far-reaching questions I've ever seen in a council survey. And for once, I was totally happy to answer every single one of them. So congratulations. Um, I commend this plan to council. I really hope you voted in. It's a, it's a pearler. I'm really, really thrilled. Thank you. Can't hear you. Thank you very much, Narelle. Ms. Dam, uh, laptop. Any questions for Narelle from councillors, please? Councillor Ashton. Um, Narelle, I know you declared your conflict of interest, but um, from your uh, wearing your other hat, can you explain why it's so important to have plans around everything, you know, whether it's our soccer strategy or our trial strategy or our arts and cultural plan, that, um, um, you know, how does that enable us to leverage opportunities which we <laughs> potentially haven't before? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm a strategic planner and business case writer for funding submissions. And my observation, having done this for the best part of 20 years, is if you've got no plan, you've got no chance of getting money unless it's an election year. Um, and that's the cold, hard reality, because most funding rounds that come out are actually looking for key selection, key performance criteria. And if you don't have a plan, you can tie that back into with actions and performance outcomes and, you know, participation contribution networky bits. Uh, you've just, you're behind the eight ball to start off with. So um, from that point of view, I think it's really, really solid because it means that if there's ever discretionary funding sitting anywhere that can be thrown at a rural area, we can stick our hand out and we couldn't do that before. That's pretty exciting. Thank you. Thanks very much, Narelle. What do you think is the biggest impediment to the equine community in Nilumbi? I was gonna be so positive tonight and not say anything negative at all. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's a bit of a tough one, really. I think as, as we all kind of grow up and our kids come in and they've got their ponies, I was so thrilled. Who was it earlier that said her grandkids? Was that Pam? Pam. Her grandkids are riding. Yeah. yeah. Um, in most communities, as they age, you struggle with that multi-generational participation, but not with horses. Look, I think, if I was honest, one of the greatest impediments here is that before the equestrian community wasn't known by size, we weren't known by a social contribution, we weren't linked together as a network, we had no economic modelling or anything that underpinned that there was value and we didn't know how much time people spent maintaining their properties. And in the presence of all of that unknown, you can have a whole heap of stories that eventually Chinese whispers become true just because there's nothing else. Um, so I think the survey for this plan is just fantastic um, because it's quantifiable. And I don't know about you guys, um, but I know that the world is a peaceful place from the back of a horse. My orthopaedic surgeon would say that his world becomes a much more profitable place Frozen. when I'm on the back of a horse. But it, it's just, yeah, I'm really excited. Thank you, that was a good answer. Any other questions for Narelle from anybody? If not, I'm just going to put a word out there to um, Joanne Jamison, if you're ready yet. If not, are we here? See if you're there, Jo. Uh, my apologies, it's just That's been a okay. mad day. I know where you are and um, good on you for doing what you're doing. Thank you very much for the time to speak. Um, I've just flown in, so um, 20 years in Yarrambat. Um, I have been a committee member, a secretary of the Yarrambat Adult Riding Club for about 16 years and a life member there at Yarrambat as well. I'd like to thank the council for the effort that they've put into the Nilambic plan. Um, uh, some fantastic work's gone into it. So basically my spin on this, and I know that everyone's had their, um, their little bits about it, but Road safety, as an emergency service worker um, in the Nilambic area, I'm really, really concerned about the lack of respect on the roads for um, our equine community. 
Um, the, the issue here is living and riding in Yarrambat for uh, well over 20 years now. I used to be able to ride on our local roads, being dirt roads, um, and now it's just barely impossible to be able to do that um, due to obviously the, uh, a lot of traffic being pushed off Yang Yang Road into the back streets. In my role as an emergency service worker, um, we constantly, I am constantly exposed to dangerous drivers, carnage on the roads and serious injuries. Uh, it doesn't matter where there's pedestrians on the roads, horses on the roads, these drivers have a lack of respect. So my uh, request from council, obviously a major consideration into off-road safe trails, um, shared trails for uh, horse riders, um, to with a connected network so you know we can go from A to B. Um, in the Yarrambat Plenty area, there's obviously uh, very, very little to offer uh, and it would be fantastic if, you know, we could see uh, council to um, see fit to be able to connect some paths uh, uh, along the way here. The ability for all women, um, we are a minority group uh, that in the horse riding industry. We did our own little survey at um, Yarrambat of recent and it was conducted last year and our responses for a survey was pretty good, over 200 responses. Overwhelming to um, the amount of people who have requested for safe off-road trails. Um, and some of these respondents stated that they would trail if it was safe to do so um, in a, an appropriate location. Out of our survey, 95% were women. 32% um, largest group aged between 45 and 54. 86% were members of a club and 65% keep their horses in the Nilimbic Shire. We know that we do have people who live outside our shire and are just in our area uh, because you can't really keep a horse in Baldwin. Um, so they choose obviously our beautiful shire to come and ride and um, keep their horses. 64% um, of the current riders do use roadside, which has become, like I said earlier, increasingly dangerous due to the lack of respect from our motorists um, on the road. So to basically sum this up, you know, a fantastic report. Thank you very much for the time. I'm sorry that I was late and having technical problems, but I thank you again. Not a problem, Jo. Um, any questions for Jo while we've got her? Councillor Perkins. Yeah, G'day, Jo. Thanks for taking the time to submit. Just um, around um, rider safety and horse safety on, on our rural roads, you know, do, do you sort of think there should be perhaps an advertising campaign that goes out to tell people um, what sort of speed um, they should potentially drive past um, a horse yes, and rider? Yes, absolutely. But what I, I in my own opinion, I believe that it should, should start with big roads in learner drivers because our learner drivers have got no idea on the road, little only what to do around large animals like horses. And they don't understand that they are a fight flight animal that, you know, when they go scream and pass and particularly on motorcycles and trail bikes, um, the horses will take off and put uh, our riders at risk. So that's why we're asking for an off-road shed network for horses to be on. But uh, education, absolutely, 100%, we need to go down that path. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Perkins. Any other questions from other councillors? Councillor Ashton. Joe to Yarrambat, um, you know, it, it's potentially the jewel in the crown. It, 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 you've got the only um, cross-country course that's actually large enough to ride a competition on. You know, what had you know what help would you hope to get from council um, with regard to Yarrambat? I was there a couple of weeks ago. It's, it, you know, it, it's, it's sad. Um, so can you tell us a bit about Yarrow Bat and potentially, you know, how people feel about that club? Okay, so Yarrow Bat Art Riding Club, I can happily speak about us. We've, um, we've got a cap membership of 80 members. Um, we're now in June. I've already had to knock back perhaps 15 new memberships because we just can't accommodate for new members until we start opening up a waiting list on the 1st of October. So we're a very popular club because of the facilities that we do have. But like you said, it takes, and some of the other speakers have said, it takes a lot of work 
from all our members, volunteer hours. We're talking about a minimum of eight vol uh, 16 volunteer hours a year. And we're talking about a membership of 80 um, to try and keep our grounds to a, to a level that we actually can co run competitions. Um, and admittedly, uh, we, yes, we lease and, and license to use our grounds from council. And that's pretty much where our assistance from council stops. We have no um, assistance any, in any shape or form, whether it's um, uh, mowing or um, oh, nothing. Everything comes from our pockets and um, from our mem memberships. And, and because we have this one year lease, it's very difficult to get any sponsorship from anybody because they don't know whether we're gonna be there for five minutes, five hours or five years. All really good points, Joe. Thank you. Thanks, um, Councillor Brooker, as Joe's um, count, uh, ward councillor, have you got any questions yeah. regarding Narrabat? Joe, well, Joe, it says here um, in the report that you've got a three-year lease of Yarrambad. Is, is this not correct, or have you just got one year to go? Do you mean? Yeah, well, that when the councils all went to one-year lease for all sporting clubs. Um, that's what we got. And just recently, I think in the last 12 months, we asked for an extension for the same reason that we can't put in for any grants because nobody's interested in lending us money for, you know, that we might be moved on for, look, I'm hoping that it never happens and won't hope it doesn't happen in my lifetime. I'd hate to see a club that's been around for, you know, 40 or 50 years be disbanded because of our um, neighbours. Um, with a uh, neighbour uh, being was right on the border of the Whittlesea Shire. Um, and, yeah. Thank you, Joe. Any other questions, Councillor Brooker? Thank you. Any other questions from other councillors? No, if not, thank you very much, Joe, for taking the time out and good thank luck you. with your search and your efforts tonight. Thank you very much. Um, is Wayne Spence... Our last, I think, unless Wayne comes on, we'll go over to Carl, our CEO, and he can go on with our remaining uh, submissions. So the first one is from Carolyn Johnston. Over to you, Carl. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm writing in support of this plan, its research and its intentions. I've lived in Kangaroo Ground for over 28 years, and during that time I've experienced a fluctuation of Council's attitude and strategies impacting on the equestrian and animal keeping communities of the Shire. My interest in horses is the reason I live in the Shire of Nilnbeck. Over the years, I have been part of the equestrian community involved in encouraging subdivision planners and council to provide off-road tracts of land for shared use trails for horse and pony riding. These mostly rural trails also enable the same off-road safety for cyclists and walkers. Existing trail routes could be improved with more connectivity. Early on, I researched property layout configurations and attended workshops on management of acreage for the purposes of horse keeping. I still attend courses regarding land management and the information available today is much more detailed and accessible. The local riding clubs are invaluable and I have been a member of Kangaroo Ground Adult Riding Club. I attended working bees, rallies and also competition at HRCAV events. Later, my young daughter joined St Andrew's Pony Club and we enjoyed a number of years there. In both clubs, like many others in Nilambik's equestrian community, I was active as a volunteer and committee member. Caring for and competing with horses requires much help. From property infrastructure, ongoing maintenance, hay harvesting, feeds, veterinary, equine massage, fiery, horse gear float and vehicle maintenance, horse training, my ongoing education and riding apparel, the number of small businesses this supports is exponential. There is no doubt that horse keeping adds significantly to Nilambik's local economy, as like myself, most people source these requirements locally. Many Western competitions are held in indoor arenas and use venues at Tatura, Elmore, Benalla, Tomimbak, Werribee Park and AELEC at Tamworth. These venues have stabling and powered campsites to facilitate show competition over a number of days. 
I also regularly travel out of the Shire to attend riding lessons at privately owned indoor arenas. Nilambic is lacking an indoor equestrian facility available to the community. A venue with outdoor arenas and indoor arena would be in demand and the economic benefits felt across the Shire as a whole. I thank the current council and its officers for truly recognising equestrian activity in all its aspects and I hope that the acceptance of the ACOM report and equine and Nilambic plan will lead to Nilambic not only supporting a vital part of its community but also reaping the benefits of the financial and social well-being associated with it. And that is Carolyn's submission. Um, just prior to getting the clock ready for the next one, Submission is from Rachel Morrison. I'll do my best in three minutes, but I won't get it done in three minutes. So here goes from Rachel. Firstly, I must thank Nillenbeek Shire Council for listening to the horse owners and riders of Nillenbeek and the subsequent development of this equine plan, the first ever in the Shire. I'm thrilled to present a story to you, mine, as a lifelong Nillenbeek resident and passionate member of the local equine community. It began in 1975 at eight years old when my parents bought a ramshackle cottage built upon termite-ridden tree stumps in Flat Rock Road in Kangaroo Ground. Once we moved there, a relative asked if she could bring her horse to our place because he was being kept on a vacant house block in Glenroy. I pleaded to have him and before long, Knight, the most important being in my young life, arrived. Knight taught me about adventure, responsibility, respect, friendship, and animal husbandry. He allowed me to explore neighboring roads, properties, and trails throughout the district, making discoveries and experiencing nature along the way. I would leave at dawn before anyone else was awake and I'd come home at lunchtime hungry, exhausted, but elated. I would spend entire days down the paddock, making jumps, pretending to be national velvet and exploring the bush, all whilst observing the land so particular to Nillenbeek. Night made me fearless, strong, adventurous and independent. He made me laugh, cry, live, fly. He gave me wings. I was wholly responsible for this creature. He was my friend and my confidant. How many times did I cry into his neck when the world was so unfair? I will forever thank him for the lessons he taught me. He also gave my parents leverage. I did chores to pay for feed uh, or the farrier, giving me an introduction to budgeting. My parents would only need to mention or the horse will go to pull me back into line and re-establish my boundaries. I joined the Hurstbridge Pony Club which was held in Ferguson's paddock at the time, and I had to ride five and a half kilometers along trails and main roads to get there and back, which in these days would have been seen as pure madness. I had no choice. We were poor. My parents weren't horsey, and they certainly couldn't afford a float. After that, I joined the newly formed Hurstbridge Adult Riders Club, of which I'm still a member today, 30 years later. I didn't need any boyfriends, fast cars or drugs. I had Knight, who kept me out of harm's way right up until his passing at 25 years old. Fast forward over 40 years and here I am sharing what was the most important time in my life. Horse riding in Nillenbeek counts more than twice the state average of participation. This is most highly represented by young girls and women. Um, equitation is a sport, passion and lifestyle offering such an important outlet for this particular demographic, allowing a healthy alternative to keeping fit and active when often other sports are less appealing. The plan will not only facilitate pleasure riding in the Shire, but will also assist landowners to better manage their horse properties to balance diversity and improve pastures. Most importantly, this plan will open a conversation and offer solutions regarding bushfire management and evacuation of horses and other large companion animals in the Shire. A suggestion of an all weather indoor arena which could accommodate men and women who hope to continue their equine pursuits into middle and older age, as well as offering a safe 
all weather option to the disabled for their riding pursuits. Got two paragraphs to go. I haven't hereby touched upon statistics nor facts, but rather hope to have offered a personal view of how one young woman's path changed into a lifelong passion because of the opportunity to own and ride a horse in Nilambic so long ago. A privilege that will now be open to so many more because of this plan. I thank you all for listening to my story, which is representative of an era and which is what many young girls still dream of today. I hope to have conveyed how much this equine plan means to me. One single rate pair, yes, but someone who has made this unique place my home forever, partially because of the horse. And that is the submission. There's no way I could have cut you off from that. It reminded me of myself and what I'm still doing today with my daughter using it for leverage. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> Point of order, um, Mayor, you, you cut me off every week. <laughs> like, like, what's going passion on? Passion, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have no problem cutting me off, but the CEO gets carte blanche. No, you, you get a pretty good go. I very rarely cut people off. Um, Mr. CEO, now that it you've was, finished it, your... It was the ladies' presentation. That's what got the time, not me. It was very innovative, actually. I loved yeah, it. Yeah, it was very nice. Very nice indeed. Um, I love yours too, Grant. The, the next uh, uh, submission is from Bill Lord, and it reads as follows. While it costs the Shire biodiversity grants to cull hard hoof deer and keep them out of green wedge bushland areas, Equine Nilambic fails to recognize the environmental damage caused by horses if allowed to graze on areas of bush, whether they be council reserves or privately owned bush blocks. Very much like the 2012 to 2016 Massenden Ranges equine strategy, equine Nillenbeek has a weaknesses, opportunities and threats or SWOT analysis. However, there is no acknowledgement or strategy to deal with the SWOT threats to the green wedge environment if a horse industry were to be established. A section addressing these threats should be included along with an action strategy with council enforcement provisions, should it not be adhered to. I also question the veracity of equine Nillenbeek, given all its data just comes from stakeholders, often those with a pecuniary interest. Like the council plan and the Green Wedge Management Plan, this blinkered equine Nillenbeek needs to be opened up for proper community consultation. It also seems inappropriate to be agreeing to this equine Nilumbic tonight as councillors will be committing council to pursuing an equestrian centre with no idea about where the centre would be located, about its implications on the conservation zone, about the manifold traffic and bushfire risks, or about the potentially significant impositions on nearby rural residents. And that is Bill's submission. Thank you, Carl. And the next one. The next submission is uh, from Greg Johnson on behalf of Friends of Nilumbic, And it reads as follows. Going by previous council agendas, which introduce new plans or strategies, we have come to expect an initial draft to go on public exhibition so community submissions can be received by council. A draft document would be posted on the Participate Nolenbeek page with a deadline for public input. This is not happening with FN.015 slash 20. Why not? Equine and Nolenbeek is presented with a recommended motion that excludes public input. Councillors are called to adopt it and authorise its immediate implementation. So what happened to Mayor Egan's promise on 30th July last year in answer to a question the Mayor indicated that a plan for the equine industry, when ready, will be made avail available for public feedback once a draft is available. Minutes of the 30th of July 2019 OCM. Her promise reflected what had been standard council procedure, a matter of good governance. 
And how does tonight's recommended motion sit with Council's community engagement policy, November 2018, which has as one of its guiding principles on page six, Council will demonstrate that all community contributions and relevant data have been considered prior to making any decisions that affect the local community. In addition, the Council Plan 2017 to 2021 has strategy has as strategy 1.1, improve community trust through better communications and genuine engagement. We believe good governance requires councillors to amend the, the recommendation for this item so that equine in Nilmbic can go on public exhibition and community submissions received. And that is Greg's submission. Just a query, and I'll just put this to our governance offer. I'd just like to actually answer a couple of those accusations there and let the other councillors know the actual engagement that went on and um, actually answer that charge by Greg Johnson. Yeah, with respect to page eight of the, or dot item mate, page 44 of the report, it sets out exactly what we did with public consultation. Yeah, there's a lot. We did local engagement session. We had one-on-one -on -one interviews. We had online survey, which was open to the whole world. Um, 904 horse riders in total. We had feedback. It was all through the draft echo dev strategy and the list goes on. And this is this has gone on for months and months and months. So to accuse us of not having proper engagement is just ludicrous. So I'll leave uh, that. If we're going to have just open uh, comments, now, that was addressed to me personally, which was why I responded to it. It wasn't addressed to the council. It was addressed to me. Yeah, personally. well, then we open comment should not be just kept to your opinion because then we need to have everyone else's opinion. It wasn't an opinion, John. I just read you the list of some of the engagement which we, I was it, accused of. It was really of whether it was good or not. It was very much to do with just uh, sending out a survey to people who were involved in the industry. It was way more than that. It wasn't much more than that. I will send round the list that I've just had. Can I remind, from Rosa. Yeah, can I remind everybody, dot point it eight in the report, of yeah. the report, and the report says exactly what we're doing. If council has read their documents, they'd know what we did. We do Correct. what you did. All right, Carl, can you go on with our next submitter, please? Heather Wilson. Councillor Brooker? Uh, I, I do think maybe a, a comment from the governance officer. Most people, we can ask questions and that's what we can do. But when they don't, when they're not there in person or not there remotely, we, we can't ask questions. And I don't think we should be commenting if we can't ask questions. Personally, Grant, I was just responding to his... Well, that doesn't... Yeah, that, I don't think that matters if it was directed to me or to you or anyone. I, I, I think we ask questions, that's the process. But I think the point, the point was that this plan hasn't been put out to community consultation. It has had some community input into its development, but you know, the charge from uh, Greg Johnson is that it hasn't gone out for a round of community consultation. It did, and it I went out in the Echo Dev strategy. Carl, can you go on with the next submission, please? Uh, the next submission is from Heather Wilson. Um, I wish to wholeheartedly support the adoption of this plan by Nillambic Shire Council. I am both a member of Hurstbridge Adult Riding Club and an equine coach at several of the pony clubs and adult riding clubs in the area. I see the important role that horse riding has in our community and the many benefits it offers. Both children and adults benefit both physically and socially from the opportunities offered by these supportive clubs. An indoor facility would greatly enhance opportunities for safe equine activities in all weathers. I am a Pony Club Association of Victoria State Level Assessor, assessing prospective PC coaches, and I'm also involved in assessing PC candidates wishing to gain their certificate qualifications. These activities would also be greatly facilitated by an indoor venue. I have lived at Cottles Bridge for 40 years, and know personally how the safety of riding on the roads has declined in more recent times. We need a network of safe riding trails and access areas to allow horse riders to access the natural beauty of our Shire. 
To conclude, I re reiterate my total support for the implementation of the equine plan in Nilmbik. That's the submission. Um, the next submission is from Geraldine Sanderson, and it reads as follows. A number of school age students who live and are educated in the Shire of Nilmbik are keen inter-school equestrian competitors. The Equestrian Australia supported competition encourages students from both primary and secondary schools to compete in a variety of disciplines. Various facilities within the Shire are used and riders can ultimately represent their school at national level. This competition has grown considerably and the ability for families on the peri-urban fringe to train and compete in inter-school competition is an important factor in choosing to live or adjust their horses in Nilambik. For many families with horse riders, the capacity to train and compete on appropriate facilities is, an, is as important to them as is the need for netball and football families to have facilities that cater for their chosen sport. An equine strategy that recognizes and promotes these aspects of inter-school sport is an in, in inducement to school enrollments in the Shire, and that is the submission. Uh, and the last submission that I have is from Colleen Hackett, and it reads uh, as follows. I submit that this plan breaches the council plan adopted in 2017. You had grand plans to rebuild community trust with proper community consultation. You have failed to do so. You had grand plans to be inclusive and transparent in your governance of the Shire. You have failed in this vision. You have listened selectively. Like the process of the Green Wedge management plan before it, this process is deeply flawed. A lack of consultation, consultation, which has dogged this council from the beginning, is continued here. Proper community consultation has not occurred. An original survey was addressed to horse owners exclusively and barely half of them responded. You have glibly assumed they were the only stakeholders. You have ignored stakeholders in the community who have environmental concerns about the damage being done to our precious biodiversity on council and private land alike by some, not all, horse owners who do not act responsibly. At the last future Nilambic meeting, questions were put by councillors to the representative of the main horse lobby in Nilambic requesting a response to concerns expressed by environmentalists of environmental damage done by horses in sensitive bushland. The answer given was that such people are haters and they hate horses. This simplistic answer failed the tenets of Clear Thinking 101, mastered by all year 11 students, which says, attack the argument, not the person. No, they do not hate horses. Rather, they are disturbed by evidence in many places around the Shire of environmental damage erosion and pollution of waterways caused by some horse owners. They are concerned about the continuing loss of biodiversity in Nilambi. The proposal to build an enormous shed somewhere in the Green Wedge yet to be determined introduces traffic and parking considerations which will affect the amenity of many in the community who cannot afford to partake of this luxury minority pastime. In the name of democracy, this process ought to be taken right. back to the drawing board and public submissions should be invited. That is Colleen's submission. Thank you, Carl. We have one last submitter, Jan Bell. Are you there, Jan? Yeah, just while we're waiting for Jan, I have a procedural question after if we've heard from Jan before we get into the debate. Here she is. Jan, can you unmute yourself? You have three minutes and then councillors may wish to ask you some questions. You there? Jan?
Hello, Jen. Ah, there you are. Welcome. You need to unmute yourself. There's a little red mic. I've unmuted myself. Thank you. Right. Oh, got, my goodness, I'm up there. You've got Hello, three everyone. minutes. <laughs> uh, my name is Jan Bell and I've lived in the Middle Shire for over 50 years and have yeah, been riding right. hey? Unmute yourself. I have. And have been riding horses in some format or or another for all of this time. My husband Peter and I now live in St Andrews and have done so for the last 36 years. We've been actively engaged and involved with the local equine community and broader community throughout this time. Peter and I were on the Eltham Shire Regional Trail Committee formed in 1992. I'm a founding member and a committee member of the St Andrews Trail Riding Group and I'm currently a committee member of NAG. Riding on the roads. Riding on the roads has never been a safe option and I applaud the council's initiative to recognise that trails are the best way to keep horse trail riders safe and off the roads. Just last week, I had an unfortunate experience where a driver was speeding on a quiet back dirt road with a clear line of vision to both riders and the horses. We indicated to the driver to slow down. The driver didn't cooperate and resulted in one very frightened horse. A less experienced rider or child rider and it could have been a very different outcome. It's greatly disappointing that even today, drivers, for whatever reason, will choose to totally disregard the safety of others. Even a quiet local back road is not safe. At present, I ride weekly on our local shared trails and my experience so far has only been a positive one. I found a mutual sense of cooperation between mountain bikers, walkers and horse riders. Horses will move out of the way of mountain bikers and walkers where possible but I've found that the vast majority of mountain bikers are more than happy to stop, slow down, and even stop for a chat. I've also found walkers wanting to interact, have a chat and pat the horses. Safety is about staying on designated tracks as well as respecting our environment. For me, shared trails do work, and with ongoing education of trail etiquette through the different network of users, it will only get better. As our roads become even busier and less safe, moving forward, we need ongoing access to a network of safe shared trails, including car parking, which also accommodate floats. These requirements are the same for all shared trail users, not just horse riders, to help keep people engaged in a healthy outdoor activity that promotes good physical and mental health. Our equine community is now a much more united and galvanised voice and I feel hopeful that with the ongoing educational processes through our equine clubs on horse management, land care, environment and shared trail responsibilities, we should be able to move forward in a more positive and collaborative manner between council and community members. The Nilambic equine community and its history is deeply woven into the fabric of the Nilambic Shire tapestry and I welcome the recognition by this council of our equine community and the enrichment it brings to many lives in the Nilambic Shire. For myself and Peter, we look forward to riding and enjoying our trails in a safe environment for many more years to come. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jan. Councillors, any questions to Jan? Councillor Ashton. Hi, Jan. Um, Hi, you've had a long commitment with St Andrews. Could you tell us a little bit of the history of, of that club and, and what the community has done there? Which club are you referring to, Jane? St, St Andrews um, uh, Pony Club Trail and riders. Adult Riders. No, the Horse and no. Pony Club. Horse and Pony Club. The Horse and Pony Club. I was DC there for uh, 10 years. Um, I oversaw the transition from when the club was... Uh, had eight members from Olives Lane in uh, St Andrews to its current site, where the numbers uh, went up to, into the 90s. It is still a thriving club. Um, it is very much a hub of the community. Um, it's uh, a well-utilised venue. They um, they have they even have weddings, funerals. Um, it's a it's a great environment and wonderful for our community and the children and families. Who paid for the clubhouse there, Jen? Who paid? <laughs> it was uh, the, 
the funds were raised initially by um, committee members. Uh, we took out personal loans um, to build it. It's been, it was built on uh, voluntary labour and uh, is still to this day all done on voluntary labour. And who put in all the menages and the jumping course and the toilets and everything else? Who funded all of that? Um, I think that would come by grants of, of some form or another. Peter Leithhead was very instrumental in uh, putting in uh, all the earthworks, um, virtually just for the price of the diesel. Um, uh, it's very, very much a uh, community asset. Thank you. And is it true that the clubhouse, um, as a condition of the council's lease, they leave the buildings open all the time for the community and walkers and cyclists and everybody else to use? Absolutely. And all the time that it's been built, we have not had uh, one um, problem. It's open, uh, the doors are open and uh, the uh, toilet facilities are open. Um, there is not a problem. It, it's very much based on trust. Everyone looks out for the ground and it works really well. I actually thought you had the only burglary in Smith's Gully at the St Andrews Pony Club and that was the lolly jar I went missing. Oh, that could be right. That could be correct. Right. Okay, <laughs> well, thank you very much for your submission. If there's no other questions from councillors, you're our last submitter. So thank you, everybody, for your submissions tonight. Thank you. Right, now we'll now go back to... I've got a question for Rosa. For Rosa? Yep. Rosa, are you there? Just a moment, Peter. We'll get her online. I have a question as well, as I indicated earlier. Before, before or after the discussion? Did you, fore did you foreshadow it? Before or after the discussion on the item, Councillor Clark? Anyway... Right, Rosa's here. Peter, Council Rosa. Persons. Um, you know, the Mayor made a statement that this has gone out for community consultation. It was part of the um, ECHO development strategy. Um, you know, the, the, the accusation was, and I think it's potentially true, is that um, the equine and Nillimbic uh, plan, as it stands, as we see tonight, hasn't actually gone out for a random community consultation, as, as you know, you expect other plans to. Can you... Uh, inform us of whether or not it went out uh, in this form as part of the echo dev strategy because yeah I've, I've obviously missed it I know, I know it was uh, it was mentioned in there it was uh, the echo dev strategy said that we should develop an echo in Nillimbic statement highlighting the history and opportunities for this sector but I wasn't aware that uh, the plan went out um, as part of that echo dev strategy can you uh, I can advise that the draft um, economic development strategy as it went out had an objective um, under the um, recreation and leisure component um, to um, investigate equine in Nillimbic and prepare the strategy. Um, and it really talked to um, preparing that document for councillors um, to adopt. Um, so it hasn't, it hasn't actually gone out for public consultation? So... The version that is currently with um, within the agenda um, and is for consideration by councillors tonight um, has been released um, as part of the agenda documents um, late last week. Um, Thursday that, night. Yep. That's what has been um, the subject of the many um, people speaking tonight. But that's not the normal process that we go through through the community consultation. Don't we normally um, seek submissions, like written submissions, and then people have the opportunity to speak. To their submissions after the, the plan has been out for a month or so uh, for community consultation? For larger strategy documents, um, we generally do put them out, uh, a draft out for um, uh, feedback via the Participate um, website. But um, for smaller um, plans, um, there is the option of um, undertaking that type of um, feedback or um, putting it up for consultation, putting it in the agenda papers and having that considered as part of the normal process through future in Nillimbic. So, there's so that was, a, that was an officer more. decision. That, that wasn't a council decision. That was an officer initiative. That was that was an officer position in consultation with um, the councillors. Um, I... I 
at a council of briefing, um, it was advised that the next steps would be that this document would be um, considered by councillors at a future Nilambic um, meeting, and that's what officers have done. Okay. And can I just add on to that, Rosa, just another question. How many of all of our plans and strategies actually go out for submission compared to this type of submission you're talking about tonight for the smaller ones where it's not millions of dollars for some special project? There are um, quite a few um, documents um, that are plans um, and those plans generally, um, you know, there is an either or option and you can opt to have um, either way. Like I said, the larger overarching strategies such as the economic development strategy, um, we do um, put that through the participate um, website and allow um, feedback and uh, to occur through that process. So the smaller um, plans um, that are um, focused um, can go either way. So is it based on whether there's millions of dollars being spent or you, because there's no sort of what's the criteria to have whether it is or isn't? I don't, I don't think that it's based on um, um, money spent. It's more so um, if, if it's flagged in a broader strategy as an action and the opportunity has been given um, through that broader strategy um, to, uh, to speak to that um, objective and that action, um, then this is a, an action of that strategy. And so therefore it can, um, you can opt to go either way in terms of how the process that you follow. So with the workshops that were at Hurstbridge and other places, is, is that a normal amount of consultation for something of this size where the whole of the public was invited to come along and speak and hear speakers? Um, normally, you would try to um, consult with a um, broad cross-section of the community, not just the people um, that it focuses on. Um, and we try to do that in the early stages of this um, document to really um, get the opinion on not just um, horse riders or those um, affiliated with um, the pony clubs um, out there, but to get an indication uh, uh, from the wider community as to their views on what the equine in mill and big plan should um, encapsulate in its actions and the body of, of the document and we feel that we have achieved that um, um, in the draft that has been um, presented for your consideration tonight. So do you, why do you think not many other people apart from horse riders turned up? I know I saw one um, one of our speakers who was objecting tonight he was at the one of the Hurstbridge sessions but that was the only one I saw. Yeah. So yeah, obviously he was into the debate, surely. I mean, if we want to go out for further public consultation, that we can resolve to do tonight. Surely no, we I just wanted to ask from a staff's point of view rather than my so-called opinion, so it's not biased to get the opinion of the staff. I think um, can I just so interject here? Um yeah, you know, I've got the uh the soccer strategy here somewhere. Yep. Um, which was adopted in 2014. I think uh, Councillor Perkins was on that council. Um, that was a, a quite an in-depth piece of work. Um, I've, I've checked this strategy. It, it really only engaged with the stakeholders because very similar, I could actually replace soccer with the word equine. No, no and it went out um, to community consultation. It went out no, for a you, month. No, you didn't. Yes, we I, did. I, I checked this document. You, you didn't, and well, we did. It, that 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 draft document was put out for community consultation. No, it wasn't. I've checked it. Was, it. I was there. Well, it went to stakeholders. The only the the furthest well, it got was to the local scouts that might have been in the stakeholders. On. The stakeholders were involved in its development, but the finished document, you know, went out in a draft form for, for community consultation. And, and the well, community that's not right stated in, in that document. What was asked for this document from a councillor briefing? I was told it would go to cut out for consultation, community consultation. And this is what we've got is just this little bit of you know, out for two days, and then you get a few people look at it. But I, I think we have to remind uh, ourselves. We'll, and it's yeah. been, it's we'll been separated, separated from a strategy to a plan to avoid this exact thing. For right. some reason, only known to, I'm not sure who. I'm going to call it there and we'll go back to the motion. And can I, can I, can I have a procedure? Sorry, Councillor Clark. Yep. The procedural matter is we seem to be changing our processes because we're on Zoom. We've just heard from 18 submitters. When we're in 
councillors sitting around the table, you either turned up and you got to engage with the councillors and make your submission. And if you didn't turn up, you didn't get a letter written for five, read for five minutes by the CEO. So my suggestion is we had 18 submissions and only 10 people we heard of the eight got the CEO to give their dissertation for them. Can I suggest to officers that in a governance sense, we need back to, you can either turn up and be heard or you can't turn up and you can send us an email like the rest of the world. Totally agree. Or you're available to, to be answered. So can I just suggest that in a governance sense, that's what should happen. It should be clear on our website. You show up or well, that's it. All right, we'll now go back to Nancy and I have a mover for item 09020, sorry, 09021, get to the right page, 01520 equine in millimetre, can I please have a mover for the motion? Councillor Ashton, can I have a seconder for the motion please? Can I have a seconder for the motion please? <coughs> Were you coughing, Councillor Clark, as a seconder? What I was going to suggest, which is why I don't want to move it, is that we simply defer this item until the OCM and we resolve it then. And if there are any other hysterics councils have got of other agendas that they think that they might have, people can come out of the woodwork and make their submissions and email us or write to us in that period of time. Don't think anything's going to change between now and the OCM. And there's lots of people playing games uh, who, A, firstly, don't want to turn up and be heard, and secondly, then want to play a game uh, uh, trying to provide some scenario that this is just a report written by the mayor, which is a load of nonsense. <laughs> we were told at briefings that this was a document which would come to the Nilan, future Nilambic. That's what happened. Councillor Ashton, you were the... It is not what happened. We were told it would go out for public consultation. Were you at a different meeting to me then? No. We, we were informed that it would go to the Future Nilambic Committee, people Correct. could make submissions, and, and the, based on those submissions, you as a group of councillors can agree to adopt the plan or not adopt it, and it's as simple as that. What concerns me is that this sort of secrecy stuff is no. making a plan which should be bringing the... There's no secrecy. Together. Stop playing games, Councillor. Right, I'm going to call it there. Councillor Ashton, you are the mover of the motion as it is on the table. Do I have a seconder? If not, the motion fails. Um, Councillor Clark, you have foreshadowed an alternate do. motion. Do we note the People want to hear all these submissions again. Happy to. We won't be submissions at an OCM. Sorry. They didn't resolve it. Yep, true. I, I, I move that we note the submissions and we take the matter to the June OCM uh, for adoption. Have we got room for that? that you... Yeah, I'm just letting um, governance know and checking that we've got room and that's fine. So can I have a seconder for Peter Clark's motion? Well, if I'm not, yeah. Councillor Ashton. All right, do you wish to speak to Councillor Clark any more than you already have? Uh, yes, briefly. Councillor Clark. Um, I'm getting tired of these people trying to create other agendas. Equally, I'm not so sure that the friends of Nilmabig are actually friends of Nilmabig. I think they're friends of their own lunchtime. Um, but if there are thousands of people who still believe they've not been heard on this matter, um, that's now been on the council agenda. We've heard from 18 different submitters tonight. Uh, let them further write, further submit, and then we can make a considered determination in about 10 days time. Um, I frankly don't think much is gonna change, uh, but I've got no problem with allowing this. I think it is a normal process that we allow people through the, like we said we would, we do briefings, we go out for public consultation. There's no shortage of that if you read this report. Um, then here's submissions at Future Nilambic, and then we adopt an outcome at a ordinary council meeting. I don't think there's gonna be, frankly, any time lost. I've got no particular problem with what's being before us right now. Um, but if there are those that see this is gonna change the world and the Shire, uh, and therefore they must get their submission in and they've missed out in the last three or four months, um, then I'm more than happy to hear from them. And equally, I'm happy to have an email. But I do find it interesting that no one has emailed me at all 
in the entire period of this going on, either those who are complaining about transparency or access or anybody else. And if you're worried about transparency and access, if they haven't worked it out, they can get my mobile number and my email by now. I would have thought they found that out in the last three and a half years. Right. Peter, is it, we're not talking about the last three or four months. We're talking about the last three or four days, you know, unless I'm wrong and, and, and the officers might be able to correct me, but I don't so think I this think we'll document through, has, has found its way into the resolution. public. Councillor Ashton, Thursday you are night. the seconder to the motion. Do you wish to speak on this before we vote? I think we just need to remind ourselves that this isn't around land management. It's not around biodiversity. It's not around, um, you know, where people... It's not around zoning. Um, as far as I was aware, you know, it's around recreation, a recreational activity like any other activity. It's a sport. And it's also part of our economic development strategy because... It's not only sport, it's something that underpins agricultural and other services out here. I have absolutely no problems with this going out to the wider community. I don't think there is anything in here that's controversial. Um, there's nothing in here that people don't already know. I think it's a great document. I think it, it captures exactly the, the data that we need as a council to work with this community as we work with any other community, whether it's soccer or basketball or lacrosse or hockey. And I think that um, all we will um, possibly achieve is another couple of weeks, we will, we will hear about, um, you know, uh, land issues, we will hear about things. I, I you know, um, I'm really happy to hear from other members of the community about this. Um, but as far as I'm aware, um, I, uh, submissions that, that touch on recreational activity, um, health and wellbeing, um, we had the arts and culture plan. I was heavily involved with that. We did the travelling teapots. Um, uh, you know, different strategies engage with the people that have an interest in the yeah. Point of order, Mayor, I don't see the time clock running. Is this oh, an oversight or...? It should be. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I. You, know, you get uh, every councillor have... gets three minutes. Okay. I've always been given three minutes. No, I don't. I don't know how long councillor Ashton's had, by the way, but without no. a time clock, we don't know. I think we get the gist, councillor Ashton. Um, yeah. The I, I have no problem with taking this out for further consultation. I just think, um, yep, really looking forward to hear what um, other people have to say about it. Um, you know, I'm very excited to hear how positively they'll contribute to this. Thank you. And I hope that they all email every single councillor and let them know their views. Um, so we'll put it to the vote. All those in favour for deferring it to the OCM. Oh, sorry, Councillor Perkins, you were saying. Hang on. Yes, absolutely. You know, if, if councillors could have the right to speak before we, we you know, we call the vote. The protest gone in this meeting is ridiculous. Put the time clock on, please. <laughs> Well, if people stopped interrupting and talking over everybody, <laughs> Councillor Perkins. Um, look, you know, deferring it until the OCM, that's a, that's a step forward. I'm not quite sure that's enough. But, you know, the normal process is that you get, you, you, you would talk to, um, you know, perhaps the, the major stakeholders to develop a plan or a strategy. Um, you know, it, 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 it's worked on. Um, we have a draft, you know, which might be called Equine in Nilovic in this instance, that goes out for community consultation, you know, to the broader community. Um, we get feedback from the broader community. There'll be written submissions. There'll be some people will speak at a future Nelmet Committee meeting like tonight. Um, you know, officers go away, look, look, at, look at the submissions, both the written and the verbal submissions, go away and, and you know, amend or, or, or not amend um, the, the document, you know, with some, some council feedback. Um, in, the, in the intervening period, and then normally it's, it's adopted at, at the OCM. Um, you know, that's the usual process. I think we're sort of getting closer and I'm more comfortable with, with at least giving um, people two weeks to, you know, like we've got to make sure that the document's out there online. I, I'm, you know, my sense of it is that this, this document hasn't been in the public arena before um, Thursday night. You know, it's, it's not that this document's um, been around for months and months, as Councillor Clark says, it's been around in the public arena for three or four days. but um, you know, it, it, it hasn't appeared on Participate Nilambic. It's not something that that, um, that that people have seen unless they trawl through um, the council agendas. And, and, and we know that's a very, very small um, percentage of, uh, you know, the Nilambic population. Um, 
so look, I'll, I'll, I'll support the motion. I don't think there's, there's nothing in, in this, this, this plan that, that causes me any terrible concern. But I think the governance process and just in terms of you know, putting it out there, out there like we, we would with, with um, every other plan, including the soccer strategy, Councillor Ashton, you know, I, I was there. That, 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 uh, that went back. It was amended as, as a result of, of the public consultation. Like once the draft plan um, was informed by uh, the, the soccer clubs and the sporting clubs that, that were affected, um, a plan much like this one went out for community consultation for a month or so. Um, it, was, it was amended and, and council um, ultimately adopted the soccer strategy. Um, you know, that was a very rigorous process because I, I remember I, there, were, there were elements that I didn't, didn't support and I was able to get some, um, some minor changes to it. Um, but look, that's a, that's a normal process and, a, and, and, you know, I'll support the motion because I think we, we're going um, some way closer to what we would, would have done normally. But I just get this sense with a lot of um, plans and strategies and doc documents that we're potentially making the mistake the last council did in trying to rush... Um, all this work in the last, you know, dying days of a council term, you know, trying to sort of say, well, there's all this work that um, we should have done by now. You know, let's let's rush it all through. We have to. We've only got um, a few months to go. Let's 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 ram it all home because you know the world's about to end. Well, the world's not going to end, councillors. Yeah, you know, some of us might be here next next year. Some might not, but there'll still be a council and there'll still be a community. We, there is no immediate rush. Thank you, Councillor Perkins. Well timed. Any other councillors wishing to speak, Councillor Jimerick? Uh, again, I have no issues with the document as it stands. My issue is with trying to rush this through the secrecy that's been around it. Rubbish. I beg your pardon, Councillor Mary. I said rubbish. I beg your pardon. You heard me. Everybody talks over me. The one time I do it and you're having a hissy fit. Keep going. Your time's running out. I don't want it to run out. I can't believe you are being so disgraceful on this, uh, this thing. I can't believe the nonsense that's going on in this whole FNC. The talking over everybody. The talking over me. You've interrupted me about 10 times. So why isn't it good for you? I'm leaving the meeting. That's disgraceful. Okay, good. Any other councillors wish to speak? Can I get a right of reply? No, you weren't speaking against it. We? Everyone agrees okay. with you, Peter. Everybody agrees. Um, all those will put it to the vote then, unless Councillor Brooker, you wish to speak, or Councillor Rankin. Mm -hmm. We're frozen. No. No. All right, we'll put it to the vote. All those in favour of Councillor Clark's motion. And that is carried. Thank you, councillors. <laughs> Could I now have a mover to go back into confidential? Moved. Councillor. Moved, Councillor Clark. Sorry, I neglected to close the current meeting. Um, thank you to everybody, the participants. We will be now moving into confidential. No, sorry, Karen. Can I... Um, oh, sorry. We've All of that's um, made me... Uh, sorry, something. we've got a, some urgent business in the future yeah. Nellenbix still to attend to. We have an urgent item relating to the community sports infrastructure stimulus, and I'm exercising my discretion to admit this item for consideration. The motion is on the screen. Do I have a mover, Councillor? So can I, can I, point of order? Councillor Clark. Um, I just want to, I mean, this is an urgent item that you've just admitted. I would suggest just in terms of process, uh, at the very least, um, that we might just hold it for a minute and text Councillor Dumerick to make sure that he is aware that there is an item of urgent business which Sorry. has now been introduced. Sorry, Councillor Clark, you disappeared from our voice here in central control. Can you repeat that, please? Lucky you. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. What I was suggesting is we might just hold for a moment and text Councillor Dumerick to let him know that an item of urgent business has been introduced that he may not have been aware of 
I wouldn't want him to think that there was anything surreptitious about the nature of not being able to participate in the secret, yes. about funding grants. Correct. Um, we'll take a five minute break. Good idea. I'm assuming someone's going to text Councillor Dumerick. I think that's a nod from Blake. Can I say I'm I'm not. I mean, if you leave the I'm meeting, you leave the meeting. That's it. I'm I I I, I don't agree with this. I, I was unclear as to whether he was leaving that item or whether he was leaving the meeting. You, you leave that he was leaving the meeting. It's yeah, over. Thought the meeting was also over. He's interrupted me 10 times tonight. Well, he wasn't the first one. No, I know. All the last. You all have, except for Jane, I think. Oh, I wouldn't let her off that lightly. You know, this Karen, I, I mean, I, I haven't interviewed, I haven't interrupted you ever. Now, in fact, Grant, I want to congratulate you through all of those submissions. You were the only councillor apart from Jane. And me. That and was me. actually Liz No. You. you were two, Peter, but Grant listened to oh, every single person. There were four of us that were the only ones. <laughs> Grant listened to every single thing half the time and Jane was going, Peter Clark's falling asleep and who's <laughs> reading this and who's reading that. And Grant, you were engaged through the whole lot. Thank you. But I also I, my point was I, I I didn't interrupt you. I raised a couple of um, we're live, are we? We're live, councillors, so we'll just wait for Councillor Demerick to see if he's returning for this late item. Yes, and I might add I was there for the whole of the session and listened to every one of them, even the ones who didn't turn up. It's um, how people are perceived on screen. Yeah, there are questions. Yeah, well, good luck at that. Sooner we get back live, the better. I agree. People are just, yeah. We can go for a I swim mean, tomorrow, but we can't go to the council meeting. Someone keeps muting me. I haven't, nobody's muting you. Nobody's there. No, no. Not, I don't know. See what happens, but anyway. Right, I'm Councillor unused. Jamerick is joining us. Sorry, I lost vision a couple of times during the last meeting, just briefly, but I um, I was just finishing my dinner. And I didn't want to see Lucky. you seen oh, anything. I lost vision on it, I don't know why, but anyway. Wait, glad you've had dinner. Well, I'll try. Um, while we're waiting for Councillor Jimmery, where's Councillor Ashton gone? Find well, just... Councillor Jimmery. There she is. Can we get the motion back up on the screen and when Councillor Jamerick comes? So that all councillors can read it. And the motion is where? Is it coming up? Right, there is the motion. Every councillor see that? What's B? Getting there, there's B. So that's the sporting services, surfaces. And C is the outdoor pool and done prep. So, okay. what about the three, three? What about the three on three basketball? Where did that suddenly disappear? Wasn't well, trouble already. I thought we were going to debate having item C and. Uh, the Diamond Creek Pool, and the three on three. Well, we can debate it, but we've got to start somewhere. Can you put up A, A again, please? Back to the start. 
So they're both talking about sporting surfaces. One was supposed to talk about sporting surfaces. The other one was lighting. Where's the lighting one? There's been a double up somewhere. <clears throat> it should be sport lighting. One of them's lighting. You've got two lots of sport. Just one moment, councillors. <clears throat> Right, can you see that? The first one's the lighting project and the B is the surface projects and C is the outdoor pool. Mayor, are we, are we providing these, as I understood it, we had to give a priority? Is, is Yelma about? Yelma? He's getting them up actually. Like history, history tells us that the council priorities don't usually carry too much weight. No, but I thought I read in the documents that they actually asked us for a, to provide it. Council to the chair, the guidelines don't suggest a priority. So it's irrelevant to which order they go in. Correct. Okay, so you have your answer, councillors. Um, so the mover, going back to the mover of the motion, it was Councillor Rankin. As, well, I'd, as a portfolio happy, chair, I'd be happy to move it. Sorry, I, I'm happy to move the motion, but I firmly believe that we were going to debate having the, can, the four items in versus the three-on-three -three basketball. Yes. That, As a portfolio chair for sports infrastructure, I'm happy to move the motion. You know, and 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 you, you can put up an amendment. Then that's that's where the debate comes in. Yeah. Put up an amendment to to pull one project out and put another one in. I'm happy to do that then. All right, so I'll move the I'll move the motion as it stands. But hang on, that's that's not what we discussed this afternoon. We 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 discussed that we would put in. Um, the two items, and I'm happy to put those two in to start off with, and then we debate what is the third item, whether that be, now, whether we, from a, a governance point of view, whether we do it as two separate items, or whether we do it as one. I'm looking at you, Blaga, for some guidance here that perhaps we pull this apart and do it as two, two items. Is that the easiest way and then allow us to debate or do you want to go through a motion, then have a, try and have an amendment and then debate it that way? Through the chair. Um, either way is a possibility. So at the moment we have a motion on the table by Councillor Perkins. I haven't heard of a second as yet, but I saw a few hands go up. Um, it can be moved as the officer recommendation um, and or... Um, if it's up to the council group, if they wish to split the motion, um, resolve the first two points and the third one, but yeah. it still has to be up for a debate. So either way, um, the council group will need to decide um, through an amended motion, so through a process of motion elimination. My suggestion is exactly that, that they proceed with Councillor Perkins and Councillor Jim yep. seconding, and then an amendment be moved to change right. one, which is mm -hmm. Councillor Rankin's purpose. Yep. So Councillor Perkins? All right, thank you. Um, get the um, motion back up, please. So you are moving that recommendation as per what's on the screen and Councillor Jamerick is seconding it. Is that correct? Yeah, and there's, a, there's another page to it, isn't there? Mm -hmm. It no. talks about impairing the CEO.
Can we have the other page, please? There yep. you go. Thank you. Can can we can we go up again? So I, are you going to leave the screen up there or, or get rid of the screen? We'll try. It's just that it's a page, and because it's landscape view, it's a very difficult to see the whole lot at once. If we reduce it, can you all see that still? Yeah, that's fine. All right, over to you, Councillor Perkins. All right, so so this is a significant grant um, grant opportunity for for council and, and really for every council in the state, and it works on um, basically council can can um, apply for up to three grants, um, projects that, that we haven't already got grant, grants for and, and projects that need to be shovel ready. You know, it's a very, very short turnaround time. Um, these, are, these are grants that, that uh, have to be ready to go you know, with, within months. Um, so the motion that I'm putting up, first of all, calls for um, an upgrade of the, the Diamond Creek outdoor pool, um, a $2 million upgrade of the, uh, the pool and, and filtration system, um, it's a 44-year-old pool that has had not much um, uh, love in that time. Um, anyone can tell by going down there and looking at the pool. Um, it, it broke down multiple times over the last summer. It wasn't available uh, for use because of the filtration system um, broke down. Uh, the pool's currently leaking. If you go down there any, any, any day, there's less water in it, um, from, from day to day. Um, you know, it needs it needs urgent, urgent upgrade. Um, the, the grant... Uh, opportunity that we've got allows for an up to a $10 million grant for um, a 10% in from council. So we put in 10%, the state government matches it with 90%. So um, the urgent uh, pool and filtration upgrade that the Diamond Creek uh, pool requires is a $2 million project um, requiring only $200,000 from council. You know, this is, this is aged infrastructure. Um, it's the only outdoor pool uh, that nillabic has got. It's only one of two uh, pools, uh, our, our other pool, um, at Eltham, you know, the much bigger and better Eltham Leisure Centre pool um, was recently redeveloped at the cost of, of $21 million. And look, it is a fantastic facility. But for, you know, the population of Diamond Creek, particularly during the summer, and certainly uh, the, uh, the rural wards um, of the Shire, the Diamond Creek outdoor pool is their closest pool. So it's not just um, an asset for Diamond Creek. You know, it's, it is a small pool. But, you know, in the Nilamit context, it is still a regional pool that, that, that does um, provide you know, outdoor aquatic activity for um, for for at least fifty percent of the shire. Um, school groups use it constantly um, in the season when it when it's open. Um, used for for um, swimming lessons as well. Um, so I believe that's a priority project. It, it, it's it's ready to go. Um, so there is some some contention I'm aware between the Diamond Creek outdoor pool and um, uh, basketball courts packaged three on three. Um, which is a great project. I certainly support it um, into the future for, for future opportunities, but I don't think it's at the stage currently where, where we can um, prioritise it um, in the top three at this stage. So the other two projects, as the motion talks about, is the, store, the sports service package, um, and that is uh, improving the sports services at the Diamond Creek Netball Courts, the Eltham Lower Park Oval, the Eltham Rugby, Diamond Hills, Campbell Street, Hurstridge High. Um, Diamond Creek Netball Court, court so I can talk of specifically in in uh, in my ward. Well, that's another regional facility. Um, it's the only a regional netball facility that, that we have in the Shire. It's 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 one of um, relatively few in the state. You know, net, netball is a is a growing sport. Um, netball has never had a lot of money spent on it. Um, you compare netball to basketball. Well, netball has always been outside, and there's no um, uh, female uh, netball that, that have really had much of an opportunity to play play inside. So. So netball is, is very much, um, you know, supporting, if we can give them decent netball courts, like they're undersized at the moment. Yeah, I know we are currently building uh, a new pavilion. They've got significant state government, government money um, and some council contribution to uh, provide a new netball court pavilion that's, that's being done at the moment. But much like, you know, what happened in research, um, why not do the whole project? You know, research, what, what we did was uh, we gave the junior footy club in, in research, you know, a million dollar, um, uh, social social room, you know. The argument was well put at the time by um, Councillor Rankin that if we're there, let's let's do the project, do it once, do it right. That's certainly what uh, the Diamond Creek uh, Netball Courts gets. 
Uh, I know that that will have um, strong support from, from both members of parliament, um, Vicky Ward and Danielle Green. Uh, they can see certainly the, the benefit in it. I think with their support, um, it's not going not to certainly do any harm. Daniel Green is the parliamentary secretary for, for sport. Um, but in this package, we've also got all those other ovals um, across the Shire that will benefit from uh, the upgrade of netball courts. And then I think the sports lighting package, there's no um, dissension around that one. I think in the pre-meet, all councils agreed um, to have sports lighting in Diamond Creek netball courts, Eltham Lower Park Oval, Eltham Rugby, Diamond Hills, and uh, the Hurstbridge um, the Hurstbridge Oval, the back oval. Um, it's 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 a win for right across the shire. So I hope council will support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Perkins. Councillor Jamerick. Uh, I support uh, Councillor Perkins' uh, motion. Um, I, I think that this is a, a, a big uh, part of the economic recovery from COVID-19. The state government has put out a stimulus package and asking to us to uh, bring forward shovel-ready projects that can get started uh, almost immediately. Uh, the offices work very hard and, and uh, you know, these things sort of pop to their desk uh, with a, a, a week or two uh, to prepare reports. I think they've done a great job at pulling together a number of reports. Um, and the, uh, the bonus to, to the Shire is that uh, for 10% outlay, we can bring forward projects that may be four or five years down the track. So uh, um, with, a, with a view to uh, helping the state get back on to its feet. So uh, wholly support it uh, and the projects as listed as outlined by Councillor Perkins. So uh, thank you. Any other councillors wish to speak? Councillor Rankin. Thank you, Mayor. Um, quite clearly, I'll support option two and option four. I will not be supporting um, the Diamond Creek pool. So if that means that this motion I'll be putting it forward to uh, uh, to amend the motion, um, so I won't be supporting this as it stands. Um, Councillor Perkins mentioned about the Diamond Creek pool that it's 40 years old, I get that. You've had 10 years though to do something about that and you haven't done anything about it. Why leave it now to try and do something about it, Councillor Perkins? Um, the three-on-three -three basketball is about to become an Olympic sport. And I'm not saying that swimming is not an Olympic sport, but 10 minutes down the road from Diamond Creek, you've got the Elfin Pool that has had millions of dollars spent on it that is supposed to be a Shire-wide destination. Here we are, we're arguing whether it be a pool, whether it be basketball courts. These are outdoor courts that would be open to anybody. Wouldn't just be swimmers. You can go and kick the footy down on the basketball court during the day. Dog walkers can use it. Anybody can use it, not just swimmers. Um, shovel ready. We've been advised by officers that it's probably not going to be as easy to make this shovel ready as what the pool is. But we need to have a good crack at it. And I don't think by just going for the pool because it's an easy option is the easy way out. Our officers, the team that we have behind us, have got, they're awesome in what they deliver and being able to pull it up so quickly. The people in Eltham have only two council courts that they use at the Eltham Leisure Centre. The Wildcats actually use the high school, which is part of the, the Victorian government. The basketball courts, which are for the three on three, which will be used by a large range of the community, um, is something that council can contribute towards the Wildcats and any other basketball association. And as a council group, we actually haven't committed or, or, or supported the Wildcats in any way, shape or form. 
The Wildcats came to us not so long ago and asked for some support and we haven't even got back to them yet. The Diamond Creek pool is something that could wait a little longer. This would be a bigger community asset that everybody can use and not just swimmers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rankin. Any other councillors? Councillor Clark. Can you unmute yourself, please, Councillor Clark? Um, that may be better, it may not be. Um, yeah. Well, the fact is you can hear me is why it may not be better. Um, does Councillor Rankin intending to move, therefore, an amendment to change the third item for the Diamond Creek Pool as an amendment to include the three by three basketball courts? Is that Councillor Rankin? Well, he can't. He's already spoken. I'll be moving an amendment. No, he did say he was going to move that. I'm just confirming that he was moving that. I will be moving an amendment to um, take out the Diamond Creek Pool and put in the three-on-three -three basketball, as we discussed this afternoon. Councillor Rankin did not move an amendment. He, he spoke as part of the debate. It's too late for him to move an amendment now. Um, right. he can Sorry, Councillor Perkins, I did suggest that I was going to move an amendment earlier. That's exactly what he said. You did not move an amendment. You did not, there was not a seconder for the amendment. You spoke as part of the debate. I was the about debate. to second I the debate before I asked him. I engaged with the governance officer to confirm that I would be moving an amendment. Now, you spoke before about antics in the administration. Just be careful about what you, what you wish for, Councillor. Councillor Rankin, I thought you were going to move an amendment. You did not move an amendment. You participated in the debate. Now, we can go to the governance officer, you know, and it's now too late for you to move an amendment because you did not move an amendment. Had you <coughs> done so, um, the mayor would have called for a second for the amendment and we would have debated the amendment. So then I'll be, I'm, I'm, I, said that I'd, I said that I was going to move an amendment. I'll move an amendment now then, if you like, Councillor Perkins. If the point is you can't. You know, if this motion fails, you, you can put up a, a, an alternative motion. Perkins, I thought I had the floor. I was, I was speaking. I thought I was in the position to make the decisions on that, and I was under the impression that Bruce Rankin, before he had all the kerfuffle before, was going to move an amendment before, and then nothing happened. Then Councillor Perkins put his motion up and Councillor Jameric seconded it. And according to, I think, governance is backing me up on that. But That's exactly what's happened. C Councillor Rankin couldn't move an amendment until Councillor Perkins had moved it. Second, what you mean? Well, Perkins moved it, Jameric seconded it. And then they spoke. And then I duly waited. Yeah, to uh, move the amendment. Um, but, but if you're unhappy with that, I'll move the amendment. So it's not a problem. We can yeah, well, it's just, you know, Councillor Rankin didn't move the amendment. Like, he didn't actually move the amendment. How do you move the amendment? Oh, the amendment? Yeah, it's 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 second. Carried on about the amendment. You know, you can't corrupt right. the council right. process, right. you know. Pass over to Councillor Clark. I think councillors need to learn about a bit of process. Councillor Clark. Exactly. So I'll move the amendment then. Um, that uh, we include as the third uh, recommended project, the three by three basketball courts um, in lieu of the Diamond Valley, uh, the Diamond Creek uh, swimming pool project. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Now I'm presuming. And I will second that. Thank you, Councillor Rankin. You can't second it because you've already spoken to the motion. Yeah, just one minute. Yeah. Read your book. I know the local law. Through through the chair. The many the many procedures local law says any council intends to move an amendment, he or she must give notice of that intention prior to a right of reply. So there's no mention of a councillor speaking to the item. As long as no one's had a right of reply, they can move an amendment, a second amendment. So I actually advised you that I was going to make an amendment before I spoke. I advised you that I was going to make that amendment straight after Councillor Perkins had moved the motion. So I was waiting. I was waiting for you to move the amendment. I was then waiting for the, the chair to acknowledge you, you moved the amendment for, for a second. That didn't happen. It was acknowledged that I was going to make an amendment. The chair never asked for a second, though. Blaga has backed up 
the process that we I just went through with Councillor Clark. Hmm? I need a seconder for the Councillor Clark's amendment. I'll second that. Is that all right? All right. Councillor Clark. We can't hear you, Councillor Clark. Again, you're better off. Um, but uh, so I was just going to suggest to governance I don't get five minutes, but anyway. Um, you won't need it. I'm not sure that the numbers are there to be able to achieve this outcome, but I do want to be able to suggest to everybody that there is actually going to be um, there's this money on offer from the state, which I think is uh, about $40 million, or is it $60 million? 60. Yeah. $60 million. And then we're going to have GSF funding of $25 million. So across uh, a range of different councils will be um, $85 million. Indeed, the circumstances are going to be much, much harder to be able to garner funds because we used to have available 50 million for um, interface councils. That's now reduced to 25 million. And part of the 25 million we used to have access to has now gone into this new stimulus fund. And the stimulus funds are available to every council. And indeed, even the GSF funds are now available to a whole bunch more councils. Um, so as much as all of the projects have merit, and as we know, we've debated earlier on tonight, a whole bunch of other projects which equally have merit. The question is, what do we think is likely to be successful to get up tonight? My concern with uh, Councillor uh, Perkins' proposal is not the validity of the project. It clearly needs to be done. My suggestion is that it be a priority project as part of what we put forward for the GSF funding round. Because the other two projects equally put Diamond Creek projects at the very top of the pecking order, um, particularly with the netball courts, et cetera. And given that we're trying to get some equity across the Shire and indeed provide opportunities for our local, local members to go into bat, um, there does need to be that equity across the Shire. And we do know, as Council the Rankin has already highlighted, the three by three uh, FB, FIBA standard courts, which is now an Olympic sport, um, is very heavily supported by the Wildcats. And as I understand it from emails from them, got some level of uh, government buy-in as well. Um, council Rankin has indicated, rightly so, that this council is uh, certainly in the southern part of the Shire not contributed dramatically um, to basketball uh, and the Wildcats have a massive following in this space and, and certainly in emails that I've received from Greg Jeffers believes they'll be able to bring um, many international standard three by three type events to the Shire which will boost tourism and other activities within that space and the proposal at least at that end of the Shire for them would be on the Fabro fields. Uh, but of course, the opportunity is there to be able to uh, have these three by three courts in some other locations without the Shire, whether it be Yarrambat, Diamond Creek, and in rural parts, whether it be Hurstbridge or others. And so the opportunity of the equity at, at a lesser cost, and really what I hang, want to hang my hat on here is that at lesser cost, is about a $700,000 type bid, if I remember rightly, out of the reports, as opposed to a $2 million type bid. And then it's going to be an equity of what they're going to spend within the Shire. So we need to have, I think, one of the projects that we're taking forward as a cheaper option for the government to be able to support, as well as getting equity right across the Shire. Um, and it's not without the possibility then to be able to drop in the uh, Diamond Creek pool uh, repairs and filtration, et cetera, in the GSF. So I think the smart decision to be able to get the maximum value out of our opportunity for the state is to do the first two as we've proposed, to put the basketball courts in here and then proceed on with GSF and other type similar projects uh, for, our, uh, for, for the Diamond Creek pool. And that's where I'd be proposing if we've got support for that view. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clark, Councillor Perkins. Uh, well, and I, sorry, 
get the, Absolutely. There's a second there, don't I get to respond first? Or respond next? Correct. Thank you. So further to Councillor Clark's comments there, um, the Diamond Creek pool is, if the money is, uh, is granted, it will bring in a little bit more into the community. Recently, we've awarded um, Aligned Leisure to run all the facilities. Um, and sure enough, we do need to contribute to the maintenance and the wellbeing of those facilities. As Councillor, Perk, um, Councillor Clark has um, pointed out that there are other funding streams that can be used to be able to assist in the filtration and the upgrade of the pool. Notwithstanding that, the economic development that these three-on-three -three basketball courts would have in the community of Eltham would be quite substantial. The Wildcats have the biggest tournament in the Southern Hemisphere, maybe even in, in the world. On the one weekend, they have over 14,000 participants. In fact, I think it might have been more. They have a significant contingent that come in from overseas to play with the Wildcats, to play in their Australia Day tournament. They've secured an NBL One team. They play games on the Australia Day weekend across Victoria. The Wildcats are very supportive of this and particularly because three on three is now becoming an Olympic sport. And for that, it doesn't just mean that the basketball courts have to stay in Eltham. They can be built in Hurstbridge, they can be built in Diamond Creek, they can be built in Yarrambat, they can be built across, across the community. So it won't just be the Wildcats that will benefit from it. It'll be the broader community. It'll be the, um, uh, the, the disability community as well. They will be able to benefit by utilising these facilities. So it's not just the basketball community as well. It is the broader community that will benefit out of a project like this. And for that, I will be supporting it. The Wildcats have asked us time and time again for support. And we have not been, uh, we can't even get back to them about one of the grant or one of the um, uh, requests that they made a couple of, couple of months ago. Um, and I really think that now is the time that we stand up and assist by giving them these, uh, these three on three courts. I keep referring it to as the Wildcats, but really it's for the broader community. People in Fab around Eltham will certainly utilize it. Everyone will benefit not just basketball. And for that, I will be asking for council support on this project. Thank you, Councillor Rankin. Councillor Perkins. Yeah, thanks, Mayor Egan. I'll, look, of course, I'll talk against um, um, the amendment. Um, councillors have been told, you know, we're all in the pre-meet. We all know that, um, that this project, Wildcats project, it's, it, as much as, you know, we'd like to help out every sporting group, everyone that, that, that writes to us and asks for us uh, for assistance, you know, um, Wildcats aren't the first name, certainly won't be the last. Um, you know, we have, lim we have limited funds. Um, we know that that project um, was only, you know, I, I hadn't even heard of it until um, a week or two ago. Um, it's not a shovel-ready project. Um, that's been the clear advice from the senior officers right up to the CEO that this is not a, sh a shovel-ready project. The grant, therefore, the grant application that we, we put in uh, is not likely to be a good one. It's not likely to be suc successful. We're unlikely to to get uh, to get this grant because we there's no time to do the work. Um, it has to be a shovel ready project. That's the that's the whole whole basis of the whole whole grant round. Um, we are wasting money and and wasting um, valuable opportunity by pursuing um, this amendment. You know, put up by Councillor Clark and and uh, Councillor Rankin. Um, yeah, the pool does need to be done. It's aging infrastructure, forty four million dollars. Um, we can get. 44 years old, we can get $2 million to um, bring, bring the, the pool back up to speed just so it doesn't break down over, over summer. Yeah, it's only for the swimmers. I, I, I get that, um, Councillor Rankin. But if we don't do it with grant money that we get from the state government and potentially get it in the next few months, we're going to have to pay for it. 
it's not going to fall onto aligned leisure. Aligned leisure uh, are responsible for 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 um, the maintenance, not not capital upgrade. You know, there won't be aligned leisure that that that, that will be paying the two million dollars. It'll be a, a you know, and something else will have to give. You know, and 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 you're going to be happy with um, with the Diamond Creek pool having to shut over over summer, Councillor Rankin. Um, so we can forget about our aging structure, forty four year old pool, only one of two in the Shire. We'll just close that one down. Um, so you can get some um, basketball courts for the Eltham Wildcats. Now I support the Eltham Wildcats um, proposal, but it's just not ready, you know. And we hope that the officers will have some time to get a, a decent um, grant ready for the, the GSF funding um, that's upcoming. There'll be more stimulus money coming, but you know this is a shovel-ready project. This is what it's all about. Um, the, the, the officer advice has, has been clear about whether or not um, your projects can, can get up. It's 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 just in its current form, it's not viable. We don't have enough time. Um, it's not easy. It's almost impossible to, to get a decent grant application up that's, that's going to um, that, that can succeed. Um, you know, two million dollars, you know, spent on the the uh, the Diamond Creek outdoor pool. It's a it's a no brainer. It has to be done. Otherwise, we 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 face uh, you know we we very much risk uh, the Diamond Creek outdoor pool having to close over summer. Um, you know, it's used by half of the shire. Thank you, Councillor Perkins. Any other councillors wish to speak? Councillor Ashton. Um, I think as far as rural people are concerned, um, yeah, we're Australians and we like swimming. And, you know, that I had a lot of support um, for things out in rural areas, but um, very genuine person, and I appreciate um, the sense that we have on um, Creek. And um, I do think it's an opportunity to. Can I just stop you, Councillor Ashton? Can you lean forward a bit? Um, staff and the other councillors, we can't hear what yeah. you're saying. Um, I, I think that getting the diamond fixed and the filtration sorted out is an opportunity that we should embrace and that um, we, we do use uh, the, that facility a lot um, and I would support that the Diamond Creek pool um, be included because I think that that's something that's simple to my residents. Thank you, Councillor Ashton. Any other councillors wish to speak? Councillor Brooker. And you can have your four well, this, minutes and more. This is just on the amendment. Correct. Okay. Look, I, I don't support the amendment. I think it was uh, clear. <laughs> I think what we need to do is do what the officers say, and which I'll, I'll be moving another amendment. <laughs> but um, what was very clear was that Diamond Creek Pool was the most, the project most ready to be successful. I think you've got to maximise your chances and put in the projects that are most ready, and that was the offer. That was the advice. So I think it's an easy decision to make. Surely, yeah, I think the the time for the three by three is uh, gr the growing suburbs fund. I think right now, the the Diamond Creek pool is is the correct decision. Thank you, Councillor Brooker. Anybody else wish to speak? Councillor Demerick. If not, we'll put it to the vote. All those in favour of Councillor Clark's amendment. Sorry. Sorry, um, do you want to write it? Sorry, Councillor. Sorry, Mayor. Um, Councillor Perkins has a right of reply. No. Uh, no, there's no uh, right of reply. Uh, it was uh, Councillor Clark's amendment. Okay, sorry. Yeah, when we go back to the substantive motion, oh, well, if we get there. So. We're voting now on Councillor Clark's amendment. All those in favour of Councillor Clark's amendment? All those against? And that is carried. And now we go back to Division, this please. Sorry? Division, please. Sorry, not, not carried, man. Yeah. Um, Division, all those in favour of Councillor Clark's amendment? Councillor Clark, Councillor Rankin, Councillor Egan, all those against? Oh, you Brooker, Councillor Perkins, Councillor Murray, Councillor Ashton, that is lost. And we now go back to the substantive motion. motion. Councillor Perkins. 
Okay, so the way I the way I recall it, um, three of us has, have spoken yeah, on the, on the motion. Uh, myself, Councillor Jumrick, um, and Councillor Rankin. Are we doing right a reply? To what? Well, has everyone finished with the debate? That's why I've asked the question. The initial debate? No, Councillor no. Brocker still wants to talk I to would, the initial for, you know, For what it's worth, I'll pitch the same argument I have earlier. Um, I'd like to move an am amendment that we exclude in the or everything in the sporting upgrades except the Diamond Creek netball courts. So we stick with the lighting strategy, the pool, and the netball courts. Do you have a seconder for that amendment, Councillor Brooker? Sorry, Councillor Brooker, can you just go back through that again? What I'm, what I'm, so my amendment up on the it, screen. Yeah, is really to. I can explain it. Is that okay? What I'm suggesting is that we support. Um, only A1, the Diamond Creek netball courts, and we exclude the other uh, items from that sporting surfaces project. I think, can I interrupt, upgrade. Councillor Brooker? I think yeah. you've got it back to front. You want to support all of A and then take out Diamond Creek netball court surfaces? They yes, were sorry. That's, I'm sorry, Mayor. That's right. I want to support the lighting, which is A. I want to um, exclude. Uh, two, three, four, and five from B and support C. All right. So can I have everybody on the screen again so I can see everybody, please? Um, can I have a seconder for Councillor Brooker's amendment? Councillor Clark, you're muted. Yeah, sorry. I'm not seconding. I just wanted to make... I want to be clear on what he's moving. So you're saying on the surfaces you only want to do the netball courts. Correct. Right, thank you. So there being no seconder grant that um, lapses and we go back to the substantive motion, Councillor Perkins, and to clarify who's spoken, I've now lost track. So three councillors have spoken, Councillor Rankin, Councillor Clark, no, Councillor Perkins, yeah, and... Myself, Councillor Jim Rankin, Councillor Rankin. Right, so um, any of the remaining councillors wish to speak? So that's Councillor Brooker, Councillor Ashton or Councillor Clark? <coughs> Councillor Brooker. Muted. Look, oh, I'll support, I think, I think this is a mistake going for the $7 million on the sporting upgrades. I think we are doubling down and we are likely to get Members of the state parliament have said they like netball. That's what they like. Let's make it easy for them. Let's give them what they want. You know, I don't think it's difficult. That way we've got a $2 million pool, we've got a $1 million lighting, and we've got a, I think, was it $2 million for the netball courts? A, a $2 million Two uh, netball court upgrade as well. I think that's far more likely. But look, oh, you know, my amendment didn't get a second, but... That, that, I think, is smart. I don't think it's, you know, this is a smart resolution. Thank you, Councillor Brooker. Councillor Clark? Uh, briefly. Um, look, uh, as Councillor Perkins indicated, one of our local members is the Parliamentary Secretary for Sport. Um, equally, I would have thought um, we want to be putting in there... Um, opportunities for Grey Sharps Road Netball and other things. I would hope that these members of parliament are not so Diamond Creek central that the rest of Eltham is lost, uh, which seems to be Councillor Brooker's view of life. Um, and the only things that matter are basketball because that's start, going to start to bring into question conflicts of interest of the members of parliament and where their families have enjoyed various sporting opportunities. Um, uh, I, I hope that's not the case. Um, what we do need to do is uh, fight for what is the best opportunity for the entire Shire. There's no doubt, as we've seen in the past, these things get cut and pasted by the bureaucracy along the way. Uh, but we need to be um, putting in submissions which provide for a broad cross-section of our community. 
um, and that's what we should be doing and seeing how it plays out. Your council, you're muted, Councillor Egan. Sorry, Councillor Ashton, do you wish to speak? You're the only councillor who hasn't spoken. No, if not, we'll put it to the vote. Um, Is there a right of reply? Sorry, Councillor Perkins, right of reply. Um, you know, probably just to answer Councillor, Councillor Brooker's um, concerns, you know, there is no reason uh, to stop the state government, you know, from from cherry picking um, the projects, you know, and it comes to that, you know, there's only there's only a, a, so much in the bucket, um, you know, potentially based on on, on the grants, um, we might end up with a shandy, you know, there's no guarantee that um, our package is going to be what's delivered, you know, we're putting the grant in, in for that, um, you know, as, as we know, we've we've received grants for projects in the past that we haven't even applied for. Um, so so any anything can happen. Um, and look, I I think it's a much better package um, when there is benefit broadly across the whole show, across two state electorates. I think we've we've got support, strong support from um, two, you know, state members of parliament, you know, for for uh, these these projects. And you know, I, I think it just gives. Um, Everyone's got a bit of skin in the game. I, I think it's, it's it's better for the broader rate base. He's the um, of basketball. Better for the broader uh, rate base. Um, and and you know, the 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 Wildcats, your time will come. Um, it's just uh, not not this round, but uh, you know, certainly uh, we'll reply to their letter uh, very quickly. I would dare say because it's been mentioned a couple of times. And um, you know, I hope uh, this this motion receives council support. Thank you. All right, we're up to the voting stage. So all those in favour of Council uh, Perkins' motion. All those against, and that is carried. And I'm now declaring, oh, actually, I need a mover to go into confidential. Declare this, can I have a mover to close? Sorry, it's just after division. I was muted. Can oh, I get a division yeah, on the last vote? All those in favour, Councillor Egan, mm. Councillor Brooker, Councillor Perkins, Councillor Ashton, Councillor Demerick, Councillor Clark, all those against, Councillor Rankin. Um, can I have a move it? Uh, just close. <laughs> just close the meeting. I'm doing my head in here. So, okay, the meeting closed at Going three well. minutes past 10, and then we will go back into confidential. Our Zoom meetings are great. Oh, I hate them. I'm so over them. Can you tell me when we're off air, please? I love them. Are we still on air? Yeah, but depends. This, this, this should be the new normal. This is a new normal. I'm now opening up the special meeting of Tuesday, June the 9th, 2020. Um, officers report OCM 092 -20. Can I have a mover to go into confidential, please? Totally lost the clock. Councillor Rankin and a seconder, please. Councillor Peter Clark, all those in favour? And that is carried. One moment, please, staff and councillors. <laughs> 